We live? Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar. I'm Jed Morgan. And despite what my panel is saying in the background, we are live and it's working on the YouTube side. StreamYarns must have messed up for them. But we are here and we survived. There was a bit of iffy there after watching Blood Origin with Jeremy Wormy and Mustang, whether or not that we would survive the next 24 hours. But we did it. We made it. And we're here to talk about this utter travesty this is mortar country style efab style and we're just going to try to see what we can get through before we lose our minds and start drinking once again but i'm joined by dermy wormy hail dermy wormy it's it's been a crazy 24 hours are you um feeling you know, okay after what we endured together you know <laughs> once we watched that show i went downstairs and i watched bad mom's christmas another uh, movie i was not a fan of i thought it was pretty bad it was better than this. And then I played Cyberpunk 2077 and I had more fun doing that. Oh, it's a good game. Yeah. I, I, I am firmly confident in saying that this is the worst television show I've seen in my entire life. I think it's worse than Rings of Power. Oh, it without is. question. No, it I is. think the only thing that could possibly be as bad, if not worse than this, is Wheel of Prime, but... That's... <laughs> it's worse than because uh, what we were talking about before in the green room, it's got every bad thing that we can take from every horrible show this year and, and 2021 as well. It's all in this. The other ones all don't maybe quite have all the bad things, but this one has every single bad thing we've been complaining about in it. With, and a few things we hadn't gotten to complain about yet, I think. Maybe. Yeah, no, there, there's way too much in this show to criticize. We won't have enough time to do it. I'm doing a hour long review. I have a four hour long rec uh, recording of us watching the show and then however long this is going to be. And it still won't be enough to break it all down. It's going to be about 10 hours worth of content for a four episode series. It's not going to be enough to break down all the issues. But as he's already been talking, Adam, uh, hail my friend. Thank you for being here. I know this is exactly how you wanted to spend Boxing Day. <laughs> Uh, I don't celebrate Boxing Day, so I'm fine. Uh, I, I I got my review out this morning. Very short form for me, under 20 minutes. Uh, I was not going to do each episode, and uh, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I watched this with just kind of apathetic glee. I, if that could even be a thing, because mm. I, I I I'm not as invested. It's it. Let's just say this is your Star Wars. And this is you just reacting it like when I forget about Star Wars. I, I, I'm there. I feel you. I, I see it all. But I'm not enraged like you are. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I, I could sit back and be like, oh, oh, that, that, that's what I can do. And I, I can laugh about it. And when I'm done with it, I can put it in its little place and I can throw it away. I don't have to keep living with it like you will. Like I live. With oh Star Wars. God. I mean, yeah. You it, live, I, it's like I live with Star Wars. It's the, it's your Star Wars right now. So mm -hmm. you have, I could, you could put that aside, just like. You can put aside Star. I, let me say that I can put it aside like you can put aside Star Wars, but I know your pain. Mm -hmm. so I know but but I watched it, and no, no one made me. You offer, I said sure, I'll help you <laughs> out. And hey, you know what? It gave me something to do last night in between Ghost of Tsushima sessions. I was recording while I was mm -hmm. rendering. Something to do while while you're talking. Figured something out. I'll explain it tonight. <laughs> my problem with my Ghost of Tsushima recordings over the past couple of days. I figured it, I figured out one of the last problems that I think will fix it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I I uh I, I had fun. I had a good night last night morning this morning and uh I'm ready to help pit perfect well uh, and we are also joined by the effervescent Lady B. She was texting me throughout her watching of it and apparently she thought it was really bad too kind of a universal thing but hail lady b what is going I, on um oh my goodness i i wish i could have watched with you guys but it was christmas i was doing stuff with my brother and um, of course yeah i i watched it late at night and i think that might have been a problem because my rage of it just knew no bounds and i I hated it because I was like, you know, I like Wheel of Time, so I obviously got, like, really mad at, like, Amazon's garbage version of that. But it was like, I watched, I also watched Mortar Country with you guys. We did that, so I got to see we uh, Rings of Power, and I was like, there couldn't be anything worse than those two shows, and they just keep, they just keep surprising me with this crap. Like, I was just so... 
It's so much <laughs> propaganda. So much. I mean, I, I've read. I brought my my book. I've read this. It's such a subversion of every freaking single thing in this book. I hate it. I was so angry. And it's very, very well put. We're gonna have a few hours of repeating ourselves a little bit like that because yeah, it's just so bad. It's kind of hard to come up with creative new ways to say it's that bad. But before I get to our final guest, his intro is gonna be a little bit longer than everybody answers. So I wanted to say hi to the chat real fast. We got some great people in the chat right now: Hail the Goddess, Jaden Hamilton, uh, Shield Wall, and Sarah. Yes, um, my, my stomach contents were greatly threatened by watching this show, especially after how much alcohol I took in. They were definitely, definitely threatened. But uh, hail to you all. Thank you all for being here. We're going to try to interact with you guys as best as we can if you guys have questions. But this is just really bad that we can <laughs> get into it. But we are also joined by Mustang. And I kind of contemplated not inviting him today after the shit he pulled on me yesterday. So I watched this show, recorded it, our reaction to it with Dermy Wormy and Mustang. That'll be coming out in a series of videos later on this week. But before the show, before we watched it in the green room, he's like, yeah, I I've already seen it. And it's not that bad. No, I, I gave it like a six out of 10. You know, I don't know what everyone's saying. It's better than Rings of Power. It's better than Willow. It's, it's not bad. It's almost House of the Dragon good, actually. And he has me convinced he's doing his top tier acting, better acting than Blood Origin actually has. And he leads me on for like half an hour. And then like 15, 20 minutes into the show, he's like, the fuck were you smoking, man? How did you think this was a six out of 10? And he's like, ha, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm a little bit upset at him at this moment, but hail Mustang. I did decide to invite you, but what has been going on, my friend? I watched it again, like I said. I I got into it and I went full OCD. This is worse than anything I have ever seen, and I'm 53. This it's just is every lore, every canon, every myth. And they did it intentionally. There's no getting around it. Mm -mm. Oh. And they stole from at least 27 different shows. And the one show that they didn't steal from or the one IP that they didn't steal from is The Witcher. There's absolutely no <laughs> Witcher in this Witcher show. They'd rather yeah. steal from up to 27 other franchises. <laughs> Before we really jump into tearing this thing apart, EFAB style, trying to jump into it, I do want to share a brief clip of my mental state during this uh, this encounter we had yesterday, and it, it, it's not healthy. It's not healthy what happened to me yesterday. Hello. I've never considered violence an option. <laughs> But I, I'm considering. <laughs> I'm watching your reaction now. Screw the show. Your reaction's priceless. Yep. You choose what, Chad? Never thought violence was something warranted after destroying a IP, but I'm feeling violent tendencies right now. We have nothing sacred anymore. <laughs> I was a bit broken by the end. That was near the end of our recording session. And yeah, I, I'd been screaming. I'd gone through puberty. My voice, you know, raising up several octaves. I did like the whole, what is it? Seven steps or whatever for um, 12. 12. Nine no, no. steps of grief. Yeah, nine yeah. steps of grief. Yeah. I went through all of them. And by that point, I was nearly at acceptance. <laughs> it was just that bad. <laughs> but, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I do. We can't harp on it too much is that this is literally like the worst thing I've ever seen. But before we jump into the actual show, I do want to give a brief overview of what the lore and the history is supposed to look like. This is a timeline I made for my lore series. And nearly all of these events shown on this timeline have been condensed into a single month. Luckily, they kept these two where they're supposed to be. But the conjunction of the spheres, 230 BC, the resurrection, and the first landing, Rise of Humanity, Time of the Witchers, and the birth, not the death, of Lara Dern. All of this happened in one month. One month. That's that's not okay from an adaptation standpoint. <laughs> well, that's one of the biggest problems is it's continuing this horrible tradition. 
information that you can the wheel of time last year where they did not account for the passage of time in anything. And Rings of Power brought it to the new level of, oh, we're not even going to tell you when this is taking place. And this one is we're just going to on one minute mm -hmm. and then expect you to buy it. And within that one minute, we're still going to F up time. Yeah. My favorite thing, I, I was talking to Mustang yesterday about this for a minute, where during the beginning of episode one, where, okay, the coup is about to happen. They've already banished uh, Bearded Guy with the Axe who becomes the witch. I don't know their names. For the record, I don't know anybody's names. Bearded Guy with the Axe becomes the first witcher, has been banished. He has already somehow ended up on the island where race swapped and apparently, according to Jed, gender swapped ancestor of Siri is mm -hmm. there as well. Uh, how did he get there so quickly? That's it, one. It's in one night. I know. He's just there. He's just there. Bam. And he's already in jail there. Now, remember, the coup hasn't even happened yet. And that was so awful. Yeah. It's like, I'm the person, I don't know anything about the lore because I haven't got there. I'm only in um, um, the second book. And I am just like, nothing makes sense in this show. There's no motivations for anything. And they do exactly what they did in House of the Dragon, where they take an irredeemable female character that's just mm -hmm. evil and has her own bad things which is not to say you can't have motivations you can't understand it and they try to make it you like you're uh, you're the bad guy and you're doing evil stuff but you're also at the same time a victim of something and it's a mess you can't well, have that the writer support. said they can't call Mirren a villain she's not a villain she's a good guy no, according no, she's to the a straight writers up villain now, yeah, share awful. my screen. Share my screen, Chad. So this was going on in episode one. This is where they uh -huh. had a little fight and he gets hit. Yeah. And according to Mustang told me you said when they leave the island, it should have been at least a three week journey. Back Depending on where they ended up, yeah, at least three weeks, and then the inland journey probably a couple more weeks to on find, top of that. And then they had, then they had to go find Michelle Yo. So a long ass time after he took this this grazing hit, he's first treating it. Right after they meet That's Michelle Yeoh. That's what my Yo. mom said. Why? She's like, what? It's, yeah, and, he, <laughs> and it's an open wound. It's it, it not stitched. Like, he's first treating it. <laughs> Did you people not understand how much time has passed since he got hurt? That thing should be pus filled infected. He should be dead. Yeah. Well, just look at this. So uh, for the, ki the Kingdom of Elves, they... And they were really creative with their names. They were super creative there with their names. They took the C at the beginning of Sintra and made it an X. Yeah, I'm thinking, why does it sound like Sintra to me? Because I'm not, I'm not versed. I'm like, Zintra, Zintera, what? I yeah, so know. he came from basically probably around here to the Skellige Isles overnight because that's where they that are in Skellige. Skellige. That was Skellige, okay. But the at the very beginning... That is it look like they had they reused these like portal stone things that they have in Wheel of Prime? Like mm. these rocks? Like it even looks like they filmed it in the same place and I was just laughing when I asked off oh, that. Oh, that is so, so more inaccurate. <laughs> but at the very beginning when we see the log for the first time because I don't remember her name, diversity, inclusion, race swap, gender swap, main character, elf chick, bitch. Uh, bestest they say ever. The, be <laughs> the bestest ever. <laughs> At the very beginning, they say that she's at the northern reaches of the continent, so that would be somewhere up here. And then all of a sudden, inside of the episode, they're like, no, no, actually, she's way over here in Skellige. They straight up contradict with the text on screen with what the characters say. Yeah. And then he teleports here, does things here overnight, and then they teleport back in the span of like a day. It's really we got to clarify a couple things because uh, we figured it out yesterday. There is at least uh, three episodes that we can verify by the runes that Jed saw that were left on the cutting room floor, and as many as probably six episodes left behind. Yeah, there's a lot, lot missing, yeah, and that would be part of it. Yeah, considering this four, they probably made this eight to ten episode season. Their average is eight, episodes. so that kind of you say that if there's a lot missing because there is zero character development there's no context to any well, well, why like, does the dwarf just, join them she's like hey guys i'm with you now because she's insane and she <laughs> yeah. her i have a question for you guys that one of the first things that i noticed is what the elves look like is no this they're just like, humans yeah they're no, humans did, 
did do these like did they just make up the ears or something like that because they all look like they had pigs ears and they look ridiculous it was comical i was like there's a lot wrong with their designs at this point they're supposed to be more like angels like if you've seen fellowship of the ring the way galadriel is portrayed that's how all elves should be at this point in time they're ein and dude at this point and none of the men should have facial hair and all the dwarvish women should have facial hair so they got that backwards and yeah they're in in the witcher in the later in the actual books in the time of Geralt, yes they're just pointy-eared humans that's all that's special about them because they lost what was special about them but pre-conjunction of the spheres they should be magical ethereal long robes and just above humanity in every way but their design in this show is just like oh yeah they're, they're just kind of here and you know they're just people and they forget Very internal generous. stuff like only yeah. 2000 Very years generous. before this they traveled through the multiverse from their home world that was destroyed but all the elves are like wait the multiverse exists wow i've never heard of that before that's insane but there would be elves still alive that did that migration right. who would absolutely know that that's crazy do they take they, they take no time to explain uh, why is there why is there no I, Why is there no what? Food. Why is there food? a famine? Food. Where's the food? They never I mean, explained it. They never they explained tried it. To, they, they tried to. In the Aridin and Baylor stuff, the guild merchants from the other kingdoms didn't want to but help no food them. Anywhere. It's to, what, what's going on? Why is there a famine? It's I'll, never I'll give you the reason, Adam. The reason why they need a famine is they need to give the Empress something to care about. So she seems like she's like the Daenerys character. She's, mm -hmm. yes, queen, I'm going to save these people because somehow I suddenly care. I mean, you cannot pause it, put your character like I'm this victim of my brother. He's going to make me get oh, married. Yeah. But also I planned a coup. Like that's incompatible with your character and their motivation. Like... Uh, but she was being oppressed by her brother and she exactly. couldn't marry anybody. She she was victim. That's why everything for... that she did is okay. Killing everybody, making everybody suffer and becoming an insufferable cow. She was hot though. It's a good question, William. It's a very yeah, good question. It is. Hey, what's up? There's no answer. Hey, William. No, I have filters at this point. I can I can watch this shit and just. Uh, I have a I question for you guys, just to there, because I asked my mom the same thing. I'm like, mom, my mom's an older woman. She's in her seventies, and she has watched some of these horrible things with me. And I'm like, mom, does this feel like a fantasy show, or does this feel like a sci-fi show? Because yeah. that looked like the um the pyramid in like blade runner or like the wallace corporation in uh, blade runner 2049 and i'm just like i do not get fantasy from this i know you asked me about the costumes at one point in time dead and i was just like what is this the freaking hunger games mm -hmm. oh god uh, it did Emperor not feel costume. like it was the freaking witcher at all like it did mm -hmm. not feel like it was anything from the same universe i was just like yeah it's another turning of the wheel guys well, according to the show's canon, this takes place 200 AD, and in the in the books, it's supposed to take place 200 years BC, so that's a 400-year difference. But what about the way that they speak, the way that they dress, the way is any different than current day? What is, like, they don't speak any different, nothing of this is any more ancient than The Witcher. It's just, they have no concept of time, just like Adam said. And yeah, her costumes were just over the top and ridiculous. They Again, it's really dark. Oh, and the I darkness! Thought, I mean, it was pretty. It just didn't really fit with what the world was. Like, I mean, I could kind of get, like, they're trying to go into, like, Byzantine kind of stuff. I don't mind the <laughs> design of what she's wearing. It just ain't right for this freaking show. Like, it's a cool costume. I kind of like the makeup, but it's well, not look, The Witcher. Look at the set design just in this image. It is so basic, bare bones. The sets are terrible. I'm like, they use that Numenor set again? Yeah. Yes, man. It's so just bad. And I, I don't know why it's suddenly become a massive trope ever since Game of Thrones, but apparently Willow's doing it, House of the Dragon's doing it, this show's doing it, is they don't know how to use brightness and contrast. Everything's too yeah. fucking dark. Yeah, the, the reason they do it is to hide their bad CGI, because we see in this show the CGI is horrific. The assassination scene, the coup scene. Uh -huh. I, realized that, I mean, listen, we all know I haven't watched Game of Thrones, so I haven't experienced the super darkness yet. This is my first time getting a full face full of it. I'm, I'm, I'm going, wait a minute. Is there something wrong with my screen? Because I dim my screens when I stream. Did I forget to raise the, the brightness of my screen back? No. I'm, it's just really goddamn dark. I can't see a thing. 
Now, each thing is when I was using these images, the dark ones, when I put them into my review, I have something on my on my editing software where it brightens everything up. Then I could actually see what was going on. I could actually see everything going on. Like, wow, I could see now. That was bad. But I thought the darkest conversations, scene, huh? I thought the darkest scene I've I've ever seen. Well, I should say in the last ten years was uh, Damon and Renera on the beach. Oh God, that oh, was God, so I hated dark. That. that was, was so darker. bad. And it was like it was filmed in daylight, and they use color grading to make it look like it's nighttime. They use color grading so much to fix their crappy lighting, yeah. to show, like hide the bad work. CGI. It's like. I mean, there was one more scene. Let me get, let me get, there's just so many in this that were just these dark scenes. Every time there's a conversation at night somewhere, they're just they're in. It's dark. You can't say like when effeminate soy boy wizard was talking to apparently uh, once was a dude, now a chick wizard. Uh, they're talking out in front of uh, gay dwarf girls <laughs> hobbit hole. I mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just that, that's what the show is. Those are all those things. Just they're Navy standing there and, it's just and you'll get it dark. It's dark or around a campfire. It's uh, dark. Oh, you're and talking about when they were ripping off Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. Yeah, there was that part too. Well, oh, um, real fast for the chat, uh, in case I forgot to say it, uh, we're going to be spoiling the shit out of this. Just blanket statement. There's nothing safe spoiler wise. So <laughs> just warning there. Oh, and Adam, for future reference, that is not Hobbit Hole. That is Willow's Hole. That, yeah, very much like Willow. Well, while you find that, I want to start doing the... Um, we'll, we'll go scene by scene. We won't actually go EFAP it. But there's this section here at the very beginning with Yaskier in the middle of a Scoia'tael battle against the Temerian forces. And before we get into it, this is the one improvement that was made. So in early leaks, it said, and this was confirmed, that it was originally going to be a prologue which saw Yaskier in a pub singing the story of the book Accurate History will actually happen with the conjunction of the spheres. And then Minnie Driver would come up to him and say, hey, no, that's wrong. And then she'd tell him leading into narration of Blood Origin. That is really, really bad. This is at least a little bit better, a little bit of an action set piece it's terribly made but they're still even in this weaponizing yaskier against the fans like they did in season two when he said oh Geralt's gonna flip out when he finds out the first witcher was an elf uh -huh. that's making fun of the fans who are going to be upset that because that's not the case whatsoever but what did you guys think of this opening prologue with this battle and mini drivers random magic character doing random magic stuff i hate the upside down start i was like what mm -hmm. the hell am i looking at I just asked this myself man. what this is why. What why do they need this? Like what does it do? I didn't know who the people were. I didn't know why it was significant and I get I I barely watched season two, so I don't know. Did is this a set up from season two? Did was oh, he in the uh, middle of No, I only season? know what this is because I know the books and the games. The Scoyatel are like a elf terrorist that target humans and try to kill as many humans as they can and for some reason Yaskier is on their side and he's like all with the Scoitel movement in this prologue which isn't the case whatsoever and later on they imply that he has elf blood in him which isn't the case it, it's just really weird and the there, there's nothing good about this for me from the editing cinematography the lighting just all of it was bad you want to know you what know? I did to watch it I did this <laughs> oh that that's a smart move actually why didn't i think of that you were i needed more too. yeah we were drinking too we were you know all this drinking this reminded me of you guys remember the end of like game of thrones and they're like we're gonna make bran the king because he has the best stories <laughs> and I'm just like, that's, that's yeah. just, just like, like yeah what they do in this show. you're gonna tell the best story so i'm gonna give you this info dump and i'm just like i don't know anything about this you could cut this like it basically set up to have a voiceover to explain all of the jump cuts they had. So, and, and of course, like Adam said in the the green room, it, the show starts out with like twenty f words in a row. Mm -hmm. It's really bad writing. I use a lot of swearing in my stuff, but I know not to do shit like that. I mean, they do that too in the books, but they do not use it the same way. It's like I was kind of surprised because there's one thing that like is mm. kind of a vibe killer for me when I read fantasy is that they start talking like modern people do, or mm -hmm. the language they use doesn't give me a sense of time and place. And 
this it's like yeah they do say like swear words in this story i mean i can't deny that but like it doesn't make sense it just doesn't feel right for the world it's so right. dark <laughs> It's dark. You know what? My my screen cap actually even made it a little bit lighter. That's the problem. <laughs> the it's actually dark. Hey. My screen caps are actually lighter than it is. There's That's the brother the and sister. Uh, the celestial brother and sister. And apparently, I guess she's uh, a dude. Wait, uh, did you catch what that was ripping off, Adam? The celestial siblings? Uh, no. You should know. A forced dyad. Uh -huh. Why would I know that? I don't look at Disney Star Wars. I don't know that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not poisoned. Yeah, I like the idea that, like, we're not, we don't look anything alike, but we're, like, celestial twins. I mean, I kind of get the magic idea of that, but it was just weird. Wait, so the people that were killed by bad, El uh, bad Hobbit. Lenny Henry. Lenny, Lenny Henry. The, the, those two kids were celestial siblings, so they're time twins but at the same time they don't look the same age correct yeah good point great point with that like i could get behind All that right. idea because it was um what was in that story with that um the sorcerer and the um woman that like yeah stregobor and renfrey she was born yeah. underneath a uh, cursed sun that was uh, an eclipse she was born underneath an eclipse mm -hmm. i could kind of get that takes idea astrology from, yeah. really far they're constantly talking about, oh, I was born under the wrong stars. That's not a thing in The Witcher. They're constantly okay. talking about astrology. Is this a thing in The Witcher? Them in the clay? Is that a thing? No, what? that fucking oh. confused me. They're all just saying, Put return him clay. to clay. I was like, you clay. need a better dictionary. Why? I have a question. Um, just to clarify something, because I don't know the lore of this, like, is this like a world where it's totally like diverse and everything? I mean, I. It's like, supposed to be Poland in medieval Poland. That's yeah. what I got from that. But like, I know there's like, you know, in, I mean, like for Game of Thrones, for example, there's places where different like people yeah, like, look yeah, like different races different. live. Like, is it supposed to be like Earth or? There there are other continents like uh, to the far south is Zeracania and that's basically Africa. Okay. So, like, That's it is I geographical. Thought, but it but, just looks silly in... Mm -hmm. And, the, yeah. like, even more so than the racial diversity in these kingdoms, that is just all three of them are homogenized in the same. The bigger problem for me was the diversity of accents. Everybody yes. has different yep. accents. Yep. I just laugh so hard from having, like, a, uh, my ex is Scottish, and I'm just like, these are the shittiest fucking accents I've ever heard. And they shift all the time. And I don't know if you guys caught this. I had to go back and double check. But at the beginning, that we'll get to in a minute, Fial is talking to his cousin after he's freed from that prison cell. His cousin. It's his first cousin. Black as, black as night. With a Nigerian <laughs> accent. I mean, that, wow. That that dude, that's darkness. It's darkness. It's, fun. it's the, the, old, the old Charlie Murphy joke. I mean, it's just, oh, my God. Wow. I was like, wait, he's, they're his cousin. Okay. Yes, they're cousins. Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay. Oh, my God. They, they, just, they beat you over the head with this shit. It's really... Could... <laughs> but, yeah, Minnie Driver, she's a good actress. I've seen her in other things like Good Will Hunting. She, she is good, but, yeah, she's phoning it in just like Michelle Yao is. She's a complete waste to the story. Her expositionary yeah, like... voiceover is horrendous. Like, Rings of Power did not trust the audience whatsoever to figure out what was on screen. It did not know the difference between show and tell. This takes it to a next level because she just randomly show up and say, like, now there are four heroes. Can you count to four? There are four of them now together. Or after seeing all the kings get killed all together with their royal retinues, she's like, now the kings are dead. Nothing would be the same again. Listen, no I shit. Like, my favorite no part shit. of Sesame Street was the counts because I had a hard time counting. So it, it just took me. Back I know. To even my mom yep. started counting. It's one like they're going to get one roll. more because they got to have seven. They got to have seven. I don't think we could have said uh, shut uh, up many uh, uh, anymore. Uh, I, I said that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. The pig ears, though. The pig ears. Okay. Oh, All right. And this is when we're introduced to our lead character for the show. Race swapped, gender swapped version of King Oberon, apparently. And she's just 
exist. I talked about in our live stream or uh, the, the video recording of us watching it all together that she has basically one facial expression for the majority of the show and it's her like lip curled in annoyance. That's like all that she knows how to do. At least Morford Clark smiled on the horse. This actress makes Morford Clark look good. Yeah, I mean, she's got sex. that, like, knowing smirk, like, I know more than you, and I'm, like, the ultimate Mary Sue here, so. I love she, she, Mary Sue. She, can she gets sing. around a lot. She, she's insufferable. She can sing. Nice. She can play an instrument. She can throw daggers. No, she, she can can't hurt sing. people. <laughs> can't sing. No, no, I she can't. <laughs> and then, uh, no, no, she cannot sing. No. no. I, don't cannot know sing. Her, I don't know if that's her or not. Well, Whoever was the, the singing she was flat as hell. They need to have her actually seem well because that's what unites the world of elves is how good a singer she like is. That Black Rose song of like, it's such is a that like song. Song and a a after after Beater Dax guy who becomes first technical witcher after they're they're done banging, you're you're so much more than I am. You're the hope to together. I'm like, oh, there it is the affirmation I've been waiting. Women affirming women. Well, it's constant, and we'll get to it in a moment, but Ithlene, when she has her prophecy about the Lark, she straight up calls her the key to everything. She's literally, in story, the woman who is the key to everything. How does her song get all over the world? That's I still Because they stole it from Mockingjay, okay? They stole it flat out, and we all just, we both, the three of us decided Jennifer Lawrence is in this as well. Yes, she that's is. That's a good point, yeah. And we talked about it a little bit in pregame. I don't actually want to show this scene because it's creepy as fuck. This random evil white dude, because the showrunners wanted to have some reason for her uh, to lark to sound badass or look badass and beat up an evil white man, decides to, in the middle of this giant crowd, try to sexually assault this girl and is surprised when people react to it. I'm not going to show it because this girl is 15 when they film this. 15, maybe 16. And the whole, that like, the world that they disgusting. create in this bar is a bunch of people just sitting, listening to a concert. So it's not like, if this was, like, some rowdy bar where there was a bunch of, like, people being drunk and stupid, yeah. like, I could buy that. But, no, it's really quiet, it's really clean, and she's just serving people, and then all of a sudden they just grab her. But this is, you know what this is? This is the Witcher, like, version, retelling their crap show version of the Tumblr mermaid scene from freaking, like, a Wheel of Prime. This was a bad TikTok scene right here. Yeah. Oh, God. Look at that face. <laughs> and yeah, she just decides to, you know, indiscriminately start attempting murder, at least. I know. She maims that man for life. Two knives to the kneecaps. He's never walking again. <laughs> I know. She just throws it out. It's like. God. But you, you guys don't understand. He's white. And yeah. a he. We're all big so it's okay. because we're criticizing it. No, no, she you know, we're all evil. Nobody's gonna kill her, you know. She eighteen. She's like, I'm just like so awesome, guys. This is the thing. In Rings of Power, we at least had a dar for some people to latch onto and like. There's not a single person I like in this show and want to have an interesting unlikable. development with. Yeah, they're all unlikable. I wish the conjuncture of the spheres had ripped the cotton apart like they said it was going to. I wish it was the end of the world. They all needed a burn. <laughs> I know. Also, no, remember in the lesser two evil story where like Geralt doesn't like really want to do anything for anyone because they both suck. I mean, I think he would he would definitely take a side and just destroy this just for the sake of his own world. I'll say this: I had a favorite character, but at the same time, I was rooting for his death. Who yeah. is that? Uh, the, the first Witcher. Fjall. Yeah, he only was guy so actually, boring. He was yeah. He's he was the a only black guy that was actually interesting to me. That's the problem, and I still didn't care when he died. I was rooting for everybody to just die, just let it all end, end it all. You mean you wanted Bruce Banner to die? Yes, <laughs> I wanted Bruce Banner to die. Well, and then we get a little bit into the design aspect of things here in this image. They can't design costumes, yeah. they can't design sets, and now they can't even design landscape CGI shots in any sort of positive way. It looks like they forgot to add textures to this. Yeah, they it's did. Just... It looks like Star Wars. Like, it looks like a... Like, yeah, it's I more sci-fi. Why into that? Well, we were talking about this on the show yesterday. A lot of elves and things of that nature and a lot of medieval contexts are representations of the people that bring civilization. Romans and throughout Northern European <clears throat> Europe brought civilization around. So it should look more Roman. This looks more Egyptian or Mesopotamian. 
Yeah, they, they constantly like there's Egyptian references that we caught up on. There were some Indian ones with those like um, bowl shaped towers that they have and some Chinese stuff. But there was no Polish Slavic influence in this at all. The I one location that so much that they took that out. It's like the names in here, everything like the mythology. I thought that was so freaking cool when I was reading it. And I was just like. They hate us. They wanted to destroy our culture. I mean, everything about this show was so offensive to me because it's like I was reading it and I can see, okay, the author was so good at bringing in political commentary about mm-hmm. making a commentary about the um, communist system and just government in general that he was living under. And they go and subvert every freaking thing in here. They make it their freaking like the rings of power. They stole our jobs kind of crap scene in there. They make this like some freaking peasant revolution and I was just like go fuck yourself. Oh we also had Mongolian throat singing in here. We did. Oh yeah just like in Wheel of Prime. Yeah they had that too in that show. Was that the time when I was gone when they started going Yep. Okay. Oh Oh, and if you guys can't tell we're in Zintria. The kingdom of Zintria. Okay. In, in case you guys, you know, can't read the word once, it's there for a second time, just just in case you weren't sure. I'm special. <laughs> I can't read. And then there's this opening assassination against King, or uh, what is she, Princess Mirren at this point. And this actually doesn't make sense in retrospect because. It makes sense when I was watching it. I'm like, who is this person? Is she like royalty? Is she like mm-hmm. a geisha? The, what the freaking makeup is this? Yeah, crap? The makeup is so weird. She, hey, the dog man, but, the dog man forgot to clean up. <laughs> Red <laughs> rocket. Yum. Uh, ah! oh, oh, we went to the same uh, spot. If this was. If, I'd kick you off right now if I was running this. I'd kick you for that. (laughs) I I told that joke yesterday in the recording. (laughs) But but with her, we find out later that she's actually in league with Baylor this whole time and that they're planning on doing the coup together. So, but then Baylor says she's behind. Yeah, and Baylor's behind this assassination attempt. Are they working together or are they not? I know it's like there was no sense her. in for me watching this that she had anything to do with this coup. I mean, like me and my mom were thinking, oh, she's gonna go away. Like my mom's like, yeah, they're gonna kill everyone, and I'm like, yeah, that seems what they're gonna do. But like, there's no indication that she has any political acumen to try to do this. I mean, this is, oh, she's this, is this is the House of the Dragon problem. This is what happens when you say t- you take your ideology that women are victims and they have to be a victim of something. It's the same thing here as it is in House of the Dragon. They're um, victims of the patriarchy, right? Mm-hmm. So you see her as being kind of like this damsel in distress. You know, my brother's making me do this. I'm just into books. And I don't even know the significance of the book because I don't know the lore. I mean, obviously it comes with like obvious later that she's doing something in particular but there's no like examples of her being a competent character so as i was watching this i didn't even think she was involved with the coup plot because they don't do anything to tell us that she's she even has the level of competence required to mm. plot something because all she is is this victim and they, they don't foreshadow right. it we know she's evil when she slits fiala's sister's throat the lesbian's throat that's when we find out Yep. That's that's how the audience is told. Foreshadowing is non-existent. Character motivations don't exist. It happens with nearly every member of the Seven yeah, where exactly. they don't want to help. They don't want to join Michelle. Yeah, I was like, no, I don't want to join. And then somebody goes, yeah, but what if you did want to? It's like, you're right. I do want to now. And there's no like reason. There's no progression. There's no reason she should turn evil. It's just, it's really, really contrived. And Baylor does need her, as he says in a later scene, that he's low born, so he can never take the throne. So he needs a puppet. And since she's in the royal line, she's the only royal member that survives the coup. He needs her. Otherwise, he has no power. So why would he have an assassination attempt against her if they're working together to use her as a puppet? And later on, though, during episode. I think it's two because there's only four of them. I don't know. Oh my god, but that armor! The, uh, <laughs> there's that moment where they actually try to, and this could be to your point where you feels like there's things missing, and this is part of a, a missing episode they put in there. They try to think that oh, she, she's a hero in this when she's skulking around, following people in the streets, and follows Gay General to his boy's house. Did it not give you like um, Rainier and Damon vibes running around? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was some House of the Dragon influence. It looked like 
They they tried to make her a hero. I felt like they were trying to make her a hero at one point, but then she goes full on psychopath or full on megalomaniac. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna bring our civilization to these other worlds after we steal their food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're gonna bring culture, and yeah, it's just really bad. But this is when the dialogue starts to get really bad because after she kills this one assassin, this master assassin, she beats with little to no effort. He comes up to her, fial. It's like. Uh, or she says, actually, you saved me. It's like, no, you saved yourself. Some great dialogue. Lady B, I know you liked um, the original Game of Thrones. Does yeah. the armor on this remind you of that? Hmm. Oh, no, not really. I mean, you not know what this reminds me? It reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean 3 and like Elizabeth's like Chinese pirate outfit she gets. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just made a cosplay of it. That's how I know. I mean, the armor looked awful. It reminded me of like the Numenorians, like their pseudo scale mail stuff that they had mm -hmm. in there. It just looks so bad. It's a, a metaphor. Everything. Yeah, some... yeah. I was like, are we going to get another House of the Dragon like burst scene or something like that? I was like, oh my God. I mean, that, when she left that like massacre thing, I was like, oh, is she supposed to be like pregnant or something? Because she's like pretending like she's sick or something. No, nope, it's just contrived bullshit. Yeah. There's an episode missing. Oh, there's lots of episodes missing. But it's in this scene where we get some of the cringiest romantic dialogue across yeah. this season. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. And then they hump. Do they not have door locks in this advanced civilization? I mean, maybe put a chair I mean, against the wall. You know. Either way, not the time. <laughs> not the time to get busy. No, no, it's always the time to get. No, busy. there's what still blood about? on her. On her hands. <laughs> they don't even wash off the blood. <laughs> but it's bow wow, chicka wow wow. I hate the ears in this scene. <laughs> bow, wow, I just, bow, they wow, look wow, like wow, pigs. Wow. They really mm -hmm. do. It's so. They look like with the willow pig ears from their mid transformation makeup. <laughs> but it, it's in this section that we find out that she's going to be. Uh, sent away in arranged marriage to end a thousand year war and her future husband doesn't have a choice in this either it's a peace summit and this is the way to make peace and make one big empire so she turns down ultimate powers the empress to kill yeah. everybody she's ever met some with her bare hands to become empress and get ultimate power she just doesn't want to share it with a man she doesn't want to share the power so yeah she's a victim in all this oh my god arranged marriage that means i get to murder everyone including my brother she slits this man's sister's throat. She, I know. Listen, it, she's so the bad. victim, and she uses her power and authority to get into this man's pants that end up getting Yeah, advantage. like, was that a consensual relationship? Could he say no to her as a guard? Like, the no, same no. thing with Rhaenyra, because she starts screwing, like, Kristen Cole. Like, could he say no to her? No. Mm. And it's the same Rhaenyra problem. It's like, what happens to Rhaenyra? Okay, her, her dad says, okay, you can marry whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. I will train you to be my advisor. You are my heir. So the rest of the show, you're wondering, what the F is your problem? The same problem with this character, and it's like it's the whole thing of you cannot write a character that is simultaneously a victim of like the patriarchy and a girl boss. Like, pick a freaking lane. Well, and we don't even know if she actually cares about him until the final episode. After this happens, after he gets banished, she doesn't react to it. Never talks about him again until the final episode and when Michelle Yao comes and is like, hey, do you want him alive? It's like, oh, yeah, he might join yeah, me. Yeah, I need to have his babies. I'm like, you're <laughs> the Empress. You have a freaking empire full of dick and you're trying to go after this guy. Like, dude, like, he's, yeah. No, she I'm wanted sorry. him dead. She wanted him dead. Oh, it was how it ended up in the end, but she did give him a chance and she did pretend to love him in the final episode. But yeah, through the middle two episodes... <clears throat> couldn't give a shit the end of this episode the rest of this episode couldn't give a shit but yeah he he gets banished and what about this man looks like an elf dude looks like some sort of viking elves should not have beards my question is when they're hunting <clears throat> him down how did they know where they were to hunt them down on skellige no clue how I, did I, they know magic Three times I've seen it now. Could not figure it out. That was one of the things I was looking for. It's I know, there on was the cutting like room floor. Two things. There were some things that I really had a problem with just as like, just 
coherence with the story. First of all, these people are all of a sudden really super famous and like they're wanted by everyone. But there is nothing, these characters do nothing to establish who they are or what they're like what they're known for what they're good at or anything like that i mean think about like i was telling my mom this because we just watched princess bride like over with the white cloaks and stuff and we're talking about how well they establish characters like you know who the dread pirate roberts is because so many people have talked to him so when you meet him you're like oh my god this guy is scary it's like there's no care like characters don't care like is the lark some scary person like the dread pirate roberts like could people talk about her is she scary well, no, they don't. They're just, she's definitely the famous, like, Mary Sue character. There's, like, everyone knows who she is, and she's amazing, and she's just this famous freedom fighter and magical bard, and I don't know. You I, just, I think you, you forgot something there. She's got a good story. That's why yeah. she's dangerous. They're constantly bringing it up, self-congratulating themselves, sucking their own dicks over at the writer's room. It's like, yeah, she's got a great story. That's why she's dangerous. Balor's like, oh, we need to go find her because she's got such a great story. Can Jeez. we talk about the fact that uh, there's a famine going on, a lot of problems, yet they've got enough Xerox machines to get wanted posters to everybody <laughs> in the world. They do. Listen, matriarchies, you know, they do what they need to do. They do what they need oh to do. I know. I can't, I'll just say the best part of this show were the beautiful landscapes of, um, I think that's Iceland. Cause yeah, I, yeah, they filmed a lot show. of it in Iceland. I noticed a lot of things that I remember seeing from, like, um, Prometheus and stuff and the start of that. Like, it's just gorgeous. I mean, it was hey. pretty, it's just like... I don't know. Nothing worked. I didn't care about anything. I wanted everyone to die, too. Well, and, and with this scene, just like we talked about time and space not mattering, they forgot where they put the monolith. Remember, at the very beginning, the monolith's out here outside the city, you know, whatever. And then they show a scene of them taking it into the city, into the courtyard. And then the very end, when Aridan's boyfriend is at the wreckage of the monolith mourning his boyfriend, they're back out on the beach. Yeah. So it like blew up and was like, oh, I want to be near the water. So the wreckage just kind of went towards the water. The sea is always right. The sea, the sea is always right. Now, that's not how you use monoliths. Monoliths came through after the conjunction. They like they came through just like humans. They're a byproduct of it. They don't cause it. They don't create portals. They're not dwarvish made. Dwarves don't have magic that would be valuable to the elves just nonsense and they don't actually explicitly say it but i think this is supposed to be a jen lady b from the yeah, last wish that? what is this thing oh, supposed to be yeah because i was I like what is gen. that who is he talking to what does it do i don't know you couldn't have any kind of backstory to any of this stuff it's just and that's and then this happened and then this happened and it's like you don't tell stories with and then it's you use mm -hmm. because therefore it's like I mean, have this person come as, like, a deity or something, offer this guy something. I mean, eventually you get the idea that this is some all-powerful thing, but other than that, I don't know what that is. Yeah, from what I can tell, it's probably a jinn, but jinns don't, like, bring people to their universes and manipulate them and say, here, do you want some more magic? Kill some people for me and I'll give you more magic. Yeah, it's I didn't not... really understand that whole thing. Like, <laughs> it's like, at the same time, it's like they have all this high technology stuff, but they can't use magic to move a monolith. They have this really crappy thing mm -hmm. with, like, 30 people pulling this ginormous thing, and I'm just like, that's stupid. It's really stupid. But the funny thing is they're like, I want your chaos magic. If you remember from the main Witcher show and actually from the books as well, chaos magic and just magic are the same thing. So he's already been using chaos magic. He used chaos magic to get here, but he's like, I've got chaos magic, but I want chaos magic. I know it's so silly what too. The and then I was just thinking of this as someone who does practice witchcraft. This is like the cringiest shit you can do. It's like, it, I, I don't know where they got the idea if it's in the books or if it's something. I just thought like, this is like what edgy like 16 year olds do when they mm -hmm. want to just be edgelords. Yep, it's just edgelords. And the CGI of this alternate universe is terrible. Just like in season two where the wild hunt were coming through from. It's just like they, they need to drop the filters, the color filters. Jesus Christ. This, this one was purple. So that weird. one was orange. And fucking hell. Oh, she did laugh. She did smile. All right, I was wrong. She did smile once. Oh, this is when she's talking to the 15 year old. 
crap. Lady. She's got yeah, to that we're best too. friends for absolutely no reason. Just happens to be this little girl that you randomly met in a pub once is the most powerful <laughs> oracle the world has ever seen. <laughs> it reminds me of the chick at the end of like Wheel of Prime. It's like the little girl on the beach that gets just annihilated by the Sean Chan because like there's no reason why they attacked it. They make this giant tidal wave to attack this empty, <clears throat> this one little girl on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, so and William brings up a uh, good point. So they they inversed it. Pre-conjunction of the spheres, the elves should have been more powerful, and after they should be less powerful. But because of the way that they're using chaos magic, where you don't get it till afterwards, and it's more powerful, they uh, switched it. Elves are less powerful before the conjunction of the spheres, and more powerful afterwards in this canon because chaos magic was introduced. Where were the unicorns? I kept looking for any reference for them, even in yeah. the scripts on the wall. No, no unicorns. Are supposed to be unicorns? Yeah, so what, what's supposed to happen is some point in the last 2,000 years, might have been at this time, Aridin, the general, the gay general dude, with a man called King Oberon, who should actually be the main character of the show, somehow absent from it. The most important character is absent. The two of them and a bunch of other elves, they break off from these Ein Shea and go to another <laughs> universe. Uh, and they found the Ein El city of Tirnalia, but that other universe is inhabited by an intelligent race of unicorns. There's a thousand year war between the unicorns and the wild hunt with Aridin and the Ein El. You know what I love about this thing is like, I don't know that much about Slavic mythology and um, Slavic paganism, but like the whole idea of unicorn is just something that is really like important in traditional European folklore and paganism and all of the ideas even in early christianity it's kind of like purity and stuff like that it's like this is such an attack on european culture i freaking hate it so much because Wait. european culture is racism and colonialism and all evil i know i know i hate it we and I'm calling him out. I'm like, stop destroying my culture. I hate seeing it. I'm going to go you, on a rant you, right now. You're white. Like, you don't have culture. Yeah. I know. I hate them telling me that. And it's like people like, well, you're just mad because you're white or whatever. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm mad when they did it to Namor. I'm mad then they did it to like the different black people in freaking like Black Panther. Like in the first, this Wakanda forever. It's bad. It doesn't respect their culture. You're destroying my culture. You're destroying their culture. Like it is important to us. This is our mythology. This is our identity. Stop just freaking destroying us and telling us that we don't matter. We matter. We're good, important people, and our stories matter just as much as everyone else's do. And if you're such a freaking monster, you cannot see the things that make us all freaking human. You cannot take the lessons away because somebody doesn't look like you. Stupid, solipistic BS crap. I, I, I'm trying to be so angry. I was so angry about this last night. I mean, I was just really just livid about how they're destroying everything. How, like, it was such an insult to the author. Just the themes. Like, what the witchers are. The idea that, like, you know, they, they fight monsters. And the whole idea of the book is that Gerald says it so many times, you know, sometimes monsters, I'm not going to kill all the monsters. I'm not going to kill the dragons because they don't really hurt people. They just do their thing. And then he says, you know what? There's monsters, there's ability in every human being to be a monster. And the freaking end of this just totally subverted that. Them taking the heart of a monster and making him a fucking witcher is everything that's this stupid. It's just, it's not what this is about. It's about, yep. like, recognizing the difference that everyone has the potential to be a monster and that our sins affect us and turn us into freaking monsters. And, yeah. Sorry. Pray, Lady oh. B. That is a woman. Go, Lady B. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's like they did it really, they did it with this idea here really bad. I, like, they did it with the idea of family and motherhood and House of the Dragon. I feel very strongly about all of this stuff. And, yes, I care about this destroying European civilization. And I think we matter. And I think, you know, other people matter, too. And they deserve better from, like, movies and other things they're doing it. I just don't know enough about their culture to say because that's not my identity. Yeah. That was great, Lady B. I, I really wish I had Gary's, you know, applause button right now because that was great. Thank you. I mean, I, I've been trying to, I've been raging and like my friends were listening to me last night and um, I know B. that 
yeah and my mom i was telling my mom this and i explained how the show basically subverts everything that's in the author's intent with like mm -hmm. being, like government power could be being the whole monster thing and it just subverts it it takes a very anti-authoritarian anti-communist message of the show and we're basically having a fucking peasant revolution at the end it's like go fuck this show like the white cloak say fuck this show <laughs> i'm so glad to have another person who understands the books on here with me <laughs> yeah, and mustang I mean, it is helpful to have a couple people yeah, I'm. Really, I've, like, uh, it's my turn, hmm. and I hate following you. I really hate. I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry. We had a great discussion, the three of us, and we were. It was so cool because it's like I don't play the video games. I don't know anything, and I'm a woman, and you guys are dudes, and it's like we each brought something to the table with that minute. discussion. Wait, You're a woman? Uh huh. <laughs> I'm a dude. I thought I was a woman. Oh wait, Lady B hasn't got a chance to see this we, yet. Yeah, we uh, kind of touched on this a little bit yesterday, but I've been holding back myself for. Well, she started. I'm going to finish it. Lady B, I thought I was a man. This is <laughs> the... Oh, crap. Not that. <laughs> what we just gonna, saw like... in this show, and Lady B touched on it, we have seen the last two years in the United States destroying our history, our statues, renaming school names, renaming everything because... They don't like the history. You are erasing history, and there is an old saying, if we do not learn from it, we will repeat it. Those statues, those books, those school names reminded us, don't repeat the mistakes that cost millions of American lives. In Europe, they're doing the same thing. When are they going to go in and say, okay, we want to hide Auschwitz, we want to hide Wiesenthal, we want to get rid of the concentration camps because we don't want to remember. Do you know it is illegal in Germany to have a swastika flag? Illegal. It's, a, it's illegal. 1984 to world. Change the change the language. Change the way people think. Control them. I mean, I think this is a full on assault on Western civilization because, like we saw in this book, like they're the people that came up with the idea of freedom of liberty. They want you to like be individuals. Like, that's really important. It's kind of like renaissance and stuff like that. Ideas. And, like, they came with the Magna Carta. It's like, that's when we started breaking the order. And I think they really hate that. And they want to destroy it. It, it, it. it got... The political message was so blatantly clear in this show. That is part of what makes it worse than even Rings of Power. Yeah. Rings of Prime. This was so politically done. Yes. It wasn't even hidden. But I will tell you one thing, Lady B, if you want to know more about the history, there's this gentleman right eh, right here. He puts out a lot of videos on it, and that's where I've learned so much. Yeah, I've got to catch up with his videos. I've just been super busy with work, and it's just, I, I wish I could just listen to my car, but unfortunately, I have to, I'm a DoorDash person, so I have to listen to the navigation, which I am fully intending about continuing the discussion that we started, and yeah. Yeah, it was... That was probably the worst thing about this entire show. There's a lot of it that I made fun of. And yeah, three times watching it because I was I went OCD on it. But everything that Jed has taught me and shown me up to the, this point, it made me want to say just how bad could they possibly do it. And it, it's insane. And it's kind of why I kind of played with Jed a little bit yesterday. And <laughs> you were evil. He, he, yeah, well, he gave me something that I'm falling in love with that I'm equating to Dune, which you guys all know how much I love it. I was like, okay, I'm getting even with you for having me watch this thing. <laughs> but in all reality, though, this is not going to ruin me from the books. No, because it's it nothing to do with it. Yeah, exactly. This, oh, what I watched yesterday, but it isn't Witcher. It isn't high fantasy. It isn't science fiction. It's political. That's what I have come to the conclusion. It's yeah. a political messaging tool. It it's absolutely propaganda. is. Crappy it's definitely one of the wokest right? things I've ever seen beyond its writing quality, but I do need to interrupt real fast to say, hail the coconut with a $1.47 super uh, sticker of a popcorn emoji. Hail, thank you for supporting the channel. We are only we can only do this because of people like you. I really do appreciate it. And uh, it looks like Adam has something for us here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I did a video on this. Yeah. It's a lot more episodes. <laughs> It's one of, you know, 107 issues that need fixed. 
it, it's a super small fix, but it's a fix. Yeah. It's just it's it's too short. Possibly no, reading it's, the it's, book. It's three episodes too long. <laughs> no, it's, we can say it's four episodes too. Long. Four episodes too long. <laughs> I mean, this is the this is the the mentality of the shows. They're still defending this across the board. Who? So the Guardian it. gave it a high high review. Oh, yeah. yeah, and they're doing their thing about how this is how you explain this. The ending explained. This is this is here are all the Easter eggs. They're doing that shit that they do in every one of these horrible things to just try and make you feel like oh. I'm stupid for not doing it because I need you to explain to me why this is so good. I need you to point out every single Easter egg there is in a goddamn show. I need you to tell me what would make it better by telling me it's too short. No. Captain Marvel's a girl now, you know, that that that's just a small change. A small change, yeah. Very, okay. very small. Netflix too long. So long. Yeah, I don't. A lot agree. of the problem is they're not in those because they truncate everything. They don't give it enough time to breathe. Too long. I love their cope of like, oh, just, I'll like, I'll just keep watching. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. No, it's hey, not. season three is supposed to be more one to one with the books, you know? Yeah. I know. I kept joking on like Jed's videos about, oh, this is a closer adaptation of the books. I'm like, what? Like, the book was close. Yeah, it's a close adaptation. We kept the book right next to the computer as we wrote this fucking garbage. Hey, we one of the writers said, "Hey, I know the, uh, the one of the writers, Matt uh, DeBrazio, He put out a picture of his copy of the book, and he's like, "See, I own a copy. That means I'm a massive fan. I don't mock it." He's like, "Oh, you own I a copy." I was literally right. Wow, that's you were literally right. Yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. I want to skip forward a little bit uh, okay, to the yeah. the execution. <laughs> Of everybody, the massacre. What do you guys think of this uh this monster that they introduced? It's horrible. What the fuck is it? <laughs> it's what an Arkansas it? mosquito. Like, is that a dragon or a mosquito? <laughs> it's so dark. I don't know how well you guys can okay. see that, but what the hell? That's it. That's it. Even Lady B's mom said it's a mosquito. I told you guys it was an Arkansas mosquito. Well, this is another example of what they did in season two. Is for some unexplainable reason they're entirely adverse to actually using the monsters of both uh, the Witcher lore and Polish mythology. They will always make up some random shit instead of actually using the monsters they have at their disposal. I don't understand why. In the Witcher season two, lots of hybrids, lots of things coming in from other universes. In this, made up both of the monsters that we see in this show they're not from the witcher they're not from mythology they're just random yeah. nonsense like a yeah. dragonfly with tails that shoot laser bolts that turn people it's, into it's not even mist. tails it's attached to its head yeah it's the hair it's it's like hair. watching some kaiju movie or something like that like hey I don't know. hey don't i don't like kaiju kaijus. movies but like come on it's like giant mosquitoes that should fight like mothra or something Jesus. Mothra would kick its ass. Yeah. But, I mean, even the original Godzilla had better CG than this. I mean, God. Yeah, that's why it's so dark, because otherwise you'd see how shitty it is, like we do in other scenes. Oh, and we do have to mention this woman's hair. I don't know if you guys saw. I'm going to pull it up on a different screen. Oh, yeah, I that, see like, that black lady that has that veil oh, of hair or some the weird The Raven Clan leader. Raven Clan. <laughs> While we were watching it, I paused it and took a screenshot of it, because I knew I was going to include it in my thumbnail. I'm positive that's black diversity lady who's bestest ever's mom. No, maybe. She's from Wakanda forever. Was she the Raven Clan or was she the queen? Yeah. I think she was the queen oh, of the Raven oh. Clan. So their leader. <laughs> no, no, no. There's like the queen. No, there, no, 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 no. There was, no the she's only the... designs that they do that aren't super generic is shit like this. The, she was the she was the, if she's the Raven Clan hen, then she's just serving the king of Persia. I'm gonna say Persia because I don't know how to pronounce that stupid kingdom's name. Yeah. Um. And, and no, yeah. She she was just like so if that's her mom. I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know I what think this it was is her supposed mom. to be. I mean, one of the things about having different countries is like literally like you know you all kind of look the same. Like you know like They're there's just a bunch so of diverse Asian that people come from Asia. Like black people come from Africa. It's like. If everyone is just like there's a bunch of diversity everywhere, that doesn't even make sense because it's like if you had that kind of diversity, eventually your culture is just going to turn into something that just all looks kind of the same even anyway, right? So, I mean. Here's a funny one for you. Talking about the diversity. We mentioned earlier everybody's accents. 
They're mm-hmm. all Northern European, I guess, or you know, kind well, of the Scottish. One. But, was, but yeah, but I was why, why is that though? Why don't all the black people have African ac- accents? Is that racism? Shouldn't they yes. all have African accents? Or yes. at least Southern. No. <laughs> Y'all. Y'all. I'm, just... I'm, I'm, I'm serious, though. They they work so hard for all... They, they, they criticize, like Lady B said, they criticize, for lack of a better term, white culture, European culture, but everybody has some form of a European accent. Why don't the... If they're so proud of their black heritage for their diversity, why don't all these... Black characters have African accents. Well, they tried that. That was Woman King. That's like, it's I just so bad. Movie. It's like, I mean, like, you could use it. I mean, like, look at Wheel of Time. I mean, like, Robert Jordan wanted to, like, screw with subverse, like, sub- subvert things to show that the world a little bit, like, it's kind of like Wheel of Time has its own conjunctions of the sphere thing when the break with the breaking of the world. And after that, it's like, there's things that make no sense, like a bunch of really tall, white, Gaelic people that live in the desert, like a bunch of, like, um, multi ethnic people living in Asia with, like, southern accents there's like different different like cult different countries on the continent where it's like it was like people that you wouldn't think would be like like i think they use a spanish or whatever like they don't look like they do because the idea was that the world was overturned and like the cultures were screwed around so that's one way you could play with like having diversity or something like this but this makes no sense because I, because how could I, I couldn't watch a show and tell that there were like different areas, different countries, because everything looked the same. And it, they're doing the new thing that like all of these new fantasy shows did. And I, I think I mentioned when I first watched like Wheel of Prime that I kind of liked that they were going with different cultural influences to show fantasy and give the world like a different flavor. But that just seems to be like a real trend because they don't want to use anything European. So you get all this generic Asian crap that to me, when I saw it, like when they go, when they finally get off the Island and they're in the city, it just looks like really bad cultural appropriation. Cause it's a bunch of people walking around with like Japanese umbrellas and like they have the little teapots and yeah. Pomeranian. Hey, hey Chad. I, I, I'm, I, I've pulled up the cast for for episode one because i'm trying to find who she is and what she's supposed to be but there is a person antonio glass and his character is and i quote shithead leader what (laughs) i'm gonna just put it in the private chat so jed could show the world you've got to be freaking kidding me well as i pull this up since we were talking about the raven clan for a moment there what is the deal with them using clan to mean king's guard? That's not the definition of clan. Clan and tribe are very similar, but they use both terms to actually mean king's guard. What the hell? I, they're, they're trying like, to subvert, you know, my clan. <laughs> subvert your clan? Yeah. I, mean, I think her name is Ket. K E T. Well, she never has a line. I don't think she says anything. Oh, I see it right there. Shithead leader. What the fuck? Wait. Sorry, I I I'm sitting trying to do research for the show and be productive, and I come across that, and I'm like, "You're a shithead." Hold on, is this um, Fial's dad? Yeah, I believe it is. Fial's dad is just called the shithead leader. The leader of the wolf clan or the dog clan is just shithead. The fuck is wrong? <laughs> this is what we thought it couldn't get any better. Is this real life? Yes. Is this a fantasy? You you know how I survive, Lady B. It's called Maker's Mark, and this is the forty six blend. Yeah, I have some. Um, I got myself some fancy whiskey for Christmas too. <laughs> well, I want to get a shot of this if I can. She straight up slits the throat of Fial's sister. She actually kills someone with her bare hands. I don't know if I can actually get to it, but yeah, that was so. Um, that was the only so reason confusing. she had no emotion when her brother died. Yeah, no emotion when her brother died, and was very happy to kill the lesbian. I need mm-hmm. to that. I guess it's just, it's just really bad. It's really dark too. 
But yeah, we got Diversity Squad leading the new Golden Empire because they can't come up with a more creative name than just Golden. But Oppressed Woman, Leashed Mute, Fat Girl, and Black Lenny Henry, Wizard Dude. We got Shithead Lady. Black Lenny Henry. Yeah, Black, Black Lenny Henry. Henry. <laughs> 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 He's Lenny Henry. Have you already started drinking? <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> Black Lady Henry. Yeah. <laughs> Is there another Lady Henry that's not black? I don't know. About. I don't know. Sorry. Maybe. <laughs> In this part, this was so silly. Again, this is a part where it's like, you want to make these characters, give them a reputation, have people talk about them. Like, oh my God, did you hear about this crazy person? Like, and then it's just people just randomly, I mean, they don't have any kind of like advanced technology to communicate with. They just randomly know, oh, he was fucking the Empress. And that's why he's in like, hey, he's got. The have you guys heard of the term noose position? No, I learned of it I think yesterday. It was I think it was coined by CinemaSins, but it's the trope in movies and TV shows where a character sees the news on a TV and it exposites exactly what that character needs to know. This is the fantasy version of it. You're just in a pub and they randomly just tell you the current state of the empire. It's just really lazy. Jed, yeah, it was. Are they playing Gwent? Uh, I, I thought they might be. When I looked closer, it's just generic cards. It's not Gwent. I was worried uh, that they were, but it's. They, I don't think they have the rights to that because that's CD Projekt Red, not okay. Andre Sapkowski, luckily. Okay. So yeah, I don't think it is Gwent. It, it's probably meant to remind you of Gwent, but it's not actually yeah. Gwent. You know what this I, reminds me of is like when we were playing Dungeons and Dragons and we do like a dungeon crawl that we get back into the town. So the first thing we would do is we'd have to like role play if we wanted to know information about like hobgoblins or whatever is in the caverns because we played Caverns of Chaos in second edition. And anyway, so we go to the tavern and we'd have to like roll for charisma to see if we could get people to talk to us. I mean, like, that's how you could do this news position thing without sounding, like, completely, like, inept at it. It's like, oh, maybe have this amazing bard person do what they do in Wheel of Time. Like, I need a, like, you know, I'm an amazing bard. I need a somewhere to, I need a hot meal and a bed. You know, can I play in your tavern for, like, an hour? And then maybe while you're playing, like, you he listen to people talk or you talk to people. I don't know, like. Here's the interesting thing about this, though. I'm all for sitting in the tavern listening to business but when you, you would hear local stuff first that's what mm -hmm. you would hear going on there local not global that was suddenly scary. they're talking global you'd be yeah. hearing them talk about their shit of that of what was once that persia kingdom not the that, global. That would make sense yeah, yeah. like they if y'all in the lark had just massacred a bunch of soldiers outside of town yeah, they'd be talking about that, and then they'd be talking about the LARP. But it's like, oh, yeah, that faraway kingdom where, you know, it takes a few days at least to have information travel. We know exactly what happened yeah. an hour ago. Wait, hey, I, I thought they were actually in the city when that all was going down. Yeah. I was more confused yes. on how they actually knew precisely that the, that the princess killed her brother and the, she did yeah. a coup. Because, and, and now I'm know. finding out that they were miles and miles away when they yeah. found this out, so it makes even less sense. Well, I something I talked about. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, just something I talked about when we were watching the episodes together is throughout the next couple, Baylor is constantly saying we need to control the story. The Lark and Fial have a great story. We need to control the story. That's how we control peasants. What's their story? Right, there's that part of it, but just as a concept <laughs> itself, that is an interesting concept. People with a great story can inspire hope if they actually had a great story. But he's shown as someone who cares about the narrative affecting the public. Why doesn't he care that everybody knows exactly what happened at the massacre? If he was actually wanting to control the story, he'd pretend, oh, no, random monster showed up. What could possibly have happened? But everybody knows Mirren was behind it. That is bad publicity. That is clear. We're not following this bitch. That would make the public upset. Yeah, it's I know. inconsistent. It's like, Just they don't get, to... it's like this is a propaganda piece, but they don't even get how propaganda works or how it even uh -huh. does that. I mean, gosh, like, ugh. But I finally discovered the one thing I like about this show and the one thing that it, that it has above Rings of Power. The what? armor is a, not a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> it's not printed on scale. Still does, exactly. though. Still are good, but at least it's not printed on a t-shirt. Yeah. I mean... I've Empress been trying is, to find one thing. The, the Empress is Xenomorph armor. 
That's not, that's oh. why I'm calling it because it kind of looks like sci-fi bio mm-hmm. hum, bio humanoid style armor mm-hmm. that's built into your skin and stuff. It, it, that's bad. Well, I, I just briefly want to mention here, they're lifting this tower up, making it stand up like this is at an angle. So they've been dragging it on its side horizontally, which like, makes sense. <laughs> can but we talk about the awful the CG? Bottom? There's it's like... Really Look at the look at the shadow on the like um obelisk, right? And there none of the people have any kind of shadows. They're not casting a shadow. No and I mean shadows, if yeah. you're gonna CG like a bunch of people lifting a giant obelisk up, like why not just CG in crowds of thousands? They're not of even plays? doing it right. I mean, I think I see a, a system of cinches and winches and pulleys and this and that, but from where they're pulling, how is that working on the rest of the winches and pulleys from where they're pulling? Listen, so yeah, the the these base. two rows, the ropes come up here and around back I here. I see it all, but they're not pulling on those ropes. They're they're pulling on the base. Listen, I, yeah, I these need the four. base of my tower to be pulled to help it get erect. But why are they pulling at the base of the tower if they're lifting up the top? That's what I'm asking. If you're trying to go like this, why are you pulling it back at the same time? You're never going to get something up if there's not a firm base. You prop exactly. up the base and lift up the top. You need to have a firm grip on the base. Yes. If anything, these people should be on the other side, Correct. pulling the opposite direction. No, other you don't problem. want to pull the opposite. That'll break it. That hurts. <laughs> other problem. I've gone down the rabbit hole and watching some of the Egyptian lore videos. I love Josh Gates. And they were showing how many people it took to move one stone of the pyramid. That obelisk is a lot more heavy than one stone of the pyramid. And we're missing oh, a yeah. whole lot of people. Listen, like, no alien guys, but pyramid. like, is it this? Are these people supposed to be like magicians? Like, maybe there's like a spell you can cast or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, there some kind of like magical competence, maybe move something heavy. Um, well, uh, portals aren't as big of a deal as this show makes it out to be. He would just open a portal and move it. Uh-huh. But you have to show the people are oppressed. Yes, you do. Wait, were they oppressed there? It looked like no, they, they were weren't doing job and getting paid. They were. I don't they know were if they got born, paid, but they were low born and oppressed. Shut up. <laughs> Damn the proletariat, there. Stop putting them common out. sense into it, Dermy. Yeah, no common sense. Well, I want to talk about this scene briefly. This has my least favorite bit of dialogue. Like, there's a lot of terrible dialogue in the show, but this is some of the worst. It's like, how can I trust you? I'm not supposed to like another clan than my own. And she's like, by the blade. I was the making sex does jokes. That mean? I was what making sex that? jokes during this scene. Like, you yeah, want to trust me? You, you just want to trust each other. Use my, yeah, my mom was making fun of me too. Just like they're gonna do a blood pack, that they? I'm like, yeah. That was a lame blood pack too. Yeah, and then right after that, he goes, "I'm gonna put her in clay." Like, that's what I kept saying. I was like, "I was like, put her in clay." What, is that I, that like I, lay in the pipe or something? I like play in Witcher games. Well, the three witch games. I've never heard that term. And again, I don't have the book lore. I just have one of the games. No one ever said put them to the clay. And here, if they're making a blood pact, it would have made more sense if they had just like slapped their arms or the cuts were like there. Now that's. Yeah, we're just we're just clasping arms. You know what you do our... that would maybe be even better than this stupid like expositional scene. Okay, you have two people from two groups where like they kind of have a common goal, but they're not really meshed together. Hey, what could happen that could kind of bring them together? I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of a th- eternal threat where they have to work together in order to survive, and then you realize, hey, maybe this thing I thought about you isn't right. Oh. Maybe you're a different person that I thought because you were willing to risk your life or do something. Something to help me like that was completely <laughs> altruistic because i don't know i always look at these things and like they just strike me as like missed opportunities like mm-hmm. you could have done so much to make us care about these characters you can make us care about her you can make us care about him you could show parts of their character through their actions and make this so much better than just mm-hmm. let's be blood brothers okay cool well, if you're gonna be like, blood brothers, shouldn't the blood mingle? Because they it split should. themselves. I know. I My said. mom's like, "What are they even doing? Cutting off his arm?" It would have made more sense if they if they had just taken the blade part and and gone like this instead of, "Oh, we're just gonna clasp and smear blood all over our hands." Well, but, the, that's what we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like what Lady B was talking about, it's the issue of 
character arcs. Like you were saying, a great way to do it is, hey, we're tentative allies, mutually assured destruction, a common foe, stuff like that, really basic bitch stuff, and then they grow to like each other. But this is just like, oh, we hate each other. We like kill each other's family members. We're opposite clans. Oh, but what if we weren't mad at each other? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to fuck? They should have started out with angry sex. They should have had angry sex. Angry I said sex. that. I said angry that. Sex. I said good it's fucking. It's just anger every, fuck, dude. Yeah. I mean, that would even no be more believable arcs. than this. Yeah, that would be more blue. But yeah, there's no arcs. Anytime a character needs to change their mind or change their personality, it's always on a dime. It's always, oh, uh, Michelle Yao needs to go with us. Oh, she suddenly wants to go for no reason. Hey, this, we're suddenly cool with each other. And it was so clearly obvious as they were, it was so obvious from the minute it starts, oh, they're going to bone eventually. It's just, there's, it's, it's, and, and they're going to bone on a relationship that is just boring. They, their adventure together has been boring. Mm-hmm. I don't it's, know, it's not cool like there was happens any, or anything. I mean, even nothing like epic Willow, happened. Like when they go to the tavern and like Mad Morgan like cross dresses. Like that was more exciting as Cecilia was in this crap. There's nothing oh. epic in this. Nothing epic mm. happens. Nothing. There's not this great story to inspire the public. And like how but As said sings. it in his review. Yeah, she sings. But like As said it, it's just CW walking and talking in hallways. That's oh all it still is. They're God, just walking really and talking. Is. They're not fighting. They're not doing actions, just walking and talking. And something with like what Adam says a few times here is they have no concept of space and time. The thing that I thought of when I was watching is these writers don't realize that there are stuff that happens in between scenes. So they're like, in this scene, this character is here. In the next scene, this character is there. They must walk straight from one to the other. There's no breaks. There's nothing that we can infer between the scenes. It seems like they're just that dumb that they don't realize that scenes don't happen back to back. It's not a four hour event. Yeah. Or (laughs) that uh, what's going on in the Capitol at the same time is something happening at the same time there. No, time moves differently. One, wherever you are, if there's different zones, but also it would just a great tactic would be to, if you want to show time movement, you have one scene here and then cut to a different scene of the characters doing more things and then you can show time elapsing in the other scene but no they just cut 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 no explanation that time has passed they just kind of oh okay now they're at least they changed their clothes because they did the same thing in house (laughs) of the dragon but like they're supposed to have all these time jumps but like the characters mirin's the the only one who changes yeah yeah, everybody else is wearing the same shit yeah yeah and it's just like what is this i gotta say i was looking at this this reminded me of like the freaking marine set from like game of thrones and like numenor like got mixed together Mm. It oh kind of looked God, like it, it. Really like the pyramid, and then it's got that, and Wait. then it also has this pseudo like star fort looking thing, which they didn't house the dragon. Like, come on, guys, why does it have a statue? That, like, yeah, like Lord the of the Rings, of Liberty. Lord I of the Rings. They never explain what that statue is. I don't know what that statue is. They want you to think to Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. Like, they want you, but to this think is Lord of the, the Witcher. Like, why do Gondor I need to think or something? Lord of the Rings? Because come with me if you want to live. I don't want to see. Wait, look at that. Oh, uh, it's not going to do it this time. Let's see. What? All right, one. She doesn't change her facial expression. <laughs> In 20 seconds. 30 seconds, actually. It's well, maybe, maybe the makeup's hardened her. All right, so this is something that I didn't talk about in my review because I don't understand why. What's up with that? Well, not Game of Thrones had a red comet, so if one comet was good, two's got to be better, yeah, right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't remember they seeing never these. And... Why? I know there's no what are, reason what are they? for it. There's a comet. It's a sign. Okay, yeah, cool. There. Sign of what? I... I told you guys, it's the two blue wizards coming. No, how the... this is no Dermy's work. This it's is not the sperm that creates the spear. That, that's how oh, it happens because these two things slam into it and fertilize the. I don't, I, I don't know. They keep bringing it up in mirror and scenes, but it never actually affects the plot. She I know there's no the there's just no explanation of anything. It's like I, I I have no background of this, so I'm like, why are they even trying to do anything? What do they want? And then their explanation when it does finally come is. We need to be colonizers. And I was like waiting for that like Wakanda forever bullshit and some call someone a colonizer like they do in that movie. It's so freaking stupid. Wait, wait. So he's now out because when they were putting up the because I'm now noticing this, when they were pulling up the the pillar, the 
the monolith thing, he was standing beside Lenny Henry, black guy. He just um, randomly appears in a cell, and sometimes he's not. Later on, he's just going to join the heroes, and they're like, then oh, he escaped get out? at some point. I escaped, yeah, how did he and... get out of there? And it's supposed to be some kind of magic prison that they put, like, Lenny Henry in, in like... How did he get out? You, it's like some prison where you can't use magical powers. So if he's magic, how did he get out? Like, it, it's done. It's applied horribly. But they say that this metal is made of Dimitrillion, which in the books and the video games suppresses magical abilities. So I mean, I get that. I kind of created something in my own like story that would do something like that. So it's like, how does he get out to just? magically join the like his star sister or something i didn't even think they were the first character at the study of like it was this freaking like danny glover like guy running around and yeah so wait that i don't know trans jenga and him are just star sister and star brother they're not actually adopted no they're just a forced dyad yeah i'm fu- they're just burning hell i hate the show and so it, this show. <laughs> there's, a, there's the MacGuffin book here that they never explain where they got it. It's like, ooh, book exists and book tells me exactly what I need to know about the monoliths that can time travel now, too. Yeah, where'd that come from? Nowhere. I don't know what the book does. I don't yeah, know. I think it's just some rip off of the Anathera device. You know what that is, right, Dad? The Anathera? No. It's like a know. it's like a um celestial um it looks like a computer device actually that was founded and you think it's ancient Greek or something that was used for navigation and it actually kind of looks like that. Really? I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but yeah, oh, that's what, what I'm like. About. Oh look it, and it's got like little gears and stuff. It's kind of like an astrolabe or something like that. It's pretty cool, but I mean, yeah, there's no explanation. What is it? Like, what are they trying to do? Why do they need this power? Like, nobody, there's no motivation for anything. There's no why to anything. <laughs> Except gay. Why should I give a shit? And then I was reminding of something we did at the White Cloaks a bunch with the rewatches. Is like Pips would do his horse watch thing. And I'm like, Mom's all like, they had horses. Where the horses go? Now they have different horses. <laughs> it's so t- I, I do want to point out something in this scene. In this conversation, she says Michelle Yao is a member, the last member of the ghost tribe. Which ghost they never really... They say tribe several times. Well, for, the ghost, for the ghost, they use it interchangeably. With the others, they never use tribe, but they do say yeah. tribe a few times. Oh, they probably it, it doesn't make it. any sense. But his response is, they're not real. They're a legend. Important thing. Because uh-huh. when he actually meets Michelle Yao, she's like, your father slaughtered my people. And he's like, yeah, Whoa. they were right to do it. How can he think they're a myth and then have knowledge that his family slaughtered her an family? I have an answer. Uh, different writers wrote episodes and didn't talk to each other. Oh, no, no, no. That's <laughs> within this episode. That's within this episode. I, I this, episode two? this is episode this is one. Episode they episode one. They contradict themselves in five minutes. Oh, okay. I'm sure they, they, they meet Michelle Yao in a few oh, minutes. Oh, meet her in this episode. So, Sorry. This is when she says it right there. I, I had it at 57 uh, minutes, roughly. She says, to you killed me. <laughs> so here we go 55 minutes she says your family killed my family and we're at 49 minutes so within six minutes they contradict Never themselves mind. it's within so funny six too because it's like they all have to decide all of them have to kill this empress like there isn't any kind of like anything other than that this white woman colonizer bad like that's like their whole motivation for all of this there's nothing like there isn't even some cheesy overused hackneyed like backstory tragic backstory like they killed all my family or something like that it's just no we all know that this person is bad even though she hasn't been in power for very long so we all have to kill her hey chad yeah do you have your vodka no, I'm not going to drink and host. Need, you're going to need it when I drop this one on you. You know those two comets? Uh-huh. They're not comets. They're worlds coming together for the conjunction of the spheres. Before? I had wondered that. You know that? I was wondering How that. Because they talked yeah. about like stuff the changing. The and blowing up just... causes the conjunction in this show, even though that's not what happened. And But if they're going in the same direction, how can they... Be parallel and coming to, I don't know. They're coming together like this. They're all lining up. I just realized it because the last scene where we see the conjunction, you see them coming all together that way. I'm going, son of a bitch. 
All right, we don't have much to say about Michelle Yao because there's not much to say about her. She exists I, in the store. She has no motivation besides getting her she sword. She wants her sword. The, yeah. Yeah, she wants her sword. They're like, I don't want to help you. You got me fired. Well, what if you did want to help us? Oh, why don't I help you? I do you? have something I want to ask. What does the ghost tribe or ghost clan ceremonial robes look like? I don't know because everything oh, is just in all the all land of they've got pointy freaking little... ethnic fashion. No. I mean, no. this whole freaking show looks like some like somebody just rolled up at like Cost Plus World Market and just bought a bunch of crap. I hate it. I hate the look of everything. Well. Is like there's no like ethnic anything. It's just a mix of like human Earth culture crap. It's like. <sighs> Hold on, I I got a picture for of what they look like. Uh hold on, give me a second. I gotta get it. I mean, I know these things have lore. I mean that that's why we write fantasy, is because we like creating worlds, we like creating something different, and it's like they just mainland every put it in a blender and like here have your like globo homo bull crap. Like mm -hmm. wait, Michelle Yo's in this for ageism. No, it look, I think Legatus is saying that that's the only thing she ever brings up in interviews is she's always talking about ageism. Because age actually is a fucking thing that you can track. Can we talk about how stupid her eyes looked? I don't know why she had blue eyes. Does anyone else Yeah, know? she's the only elf who has contacts. Like, the, the hell? All elves should, but they should look better than that. I just don't understand the significance of it. It's really weird. It just made her look kind of, like, weird. I don't know. You're really weird. Do you find what you were looking for, Mustang? Oh, I've got it, but I've got to get a better image because this one could get us in trouble. All right. Well, and, and something that uh, I think you brought up earlier, Adam, and in your review, it's at this moment after weeks, months, however long it's been, supposedly it's only been a day, according to the show, he finally decides to cauterize the injury he got in that fight on Skellige. Yeah. In that time, they sailed across an ocean, traveled to wherever the fuck Michelle Yao is, and now he's like, ooh, it still hurts. Why does it still hurt? I do they have had, to give them props for, they didn't use a stick, a burning stick to cauterize it like the Rings of Power did. They had time to sit in a bar and have a drink. They had, they had time to wander around the wilderness. Probably they had for conversations by with a fire right there. And now he decides to do it. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you asked Derby, I delivered. It was a joke, but so is the show. But the rest of the episode is just pointless. I mean, like, hey, I, if I went and go to visit you guys on the East Coast, like, right? If I was making a big journey, you know, maybe like the places where I live in California, like, it looks a little different than where you guys live, isn't it? I mean, it's eighty degrees almost out here, and it's snowing over there right so if you travel distances maybe the place would look a little different right you think they could do that in their show no i don't know what you're talking oh about oh my god uh, all i know is flat uh, do you guys recognize the set i know it's hard to tell with it being dark but it looks like a certain set from another tv show that is came that out from, this year from game of thrones boba fett yep it looks like oh. boba fett or also looks like the freaking like town where they're chasing the Tumblr barmaid. But oh no, yeah, that's definitely. I hate like, this more of introduction of this crazy oh. little bitch. Oh, you, you have lots to What's say about going her. On? Adam. It's like, well, I mean, it's just she, you, you, her story is that her girlfriend got uh, abused and murdered by elves, and then she's on a hunt to kill them all. And mm -hmm. we see her bar sneak her way into this thing. We hear. The conflict. Then she comes out covered in blood, <laughs> and goes into blood. And then we get. You know what my mom her. pointed out? And this is my mom just being incredibly based. It's like she's like they cannot show her fighting all these people because it would be so ridiculous that like it would lose all credibility. <laughs> That's my point. And later in the they're painting the wall with the, the guy, final guy, and then later on, every time she's in a combat situation. She's just standing there, wobbing people in the legs and up and up swinging the hammer. Never actually doing anything acrobatic or or agile. She just stands there where everybody else stands around her and lets her beat on them with her with her gay hammer. At the least hammer in like Rings of Power, we got the stupid like gay elves and the like um, dwarves like fighting and breaking rocks and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, she's, she's such an annoying character, and she's just she's so... She's got a hammer with tits on it. Chipperly, in, her, her insane chipperness. It's like, oh, you're, you have to like her, one, because she's gay, and she's so insanely happy about everything. And she's high all the time. I know, so, and she's and she like just talking to, kill to elves, her so she hammer. She ends up with the elves. It's, it's like at first I'm like, who is she talking to? Oh, come on, Gwen. I'm like, you sound like some crazy freaking villain from like a Batman cartoon or something. Oh, and she's not just talking at it. She says, oh, it was Gwen I's idea. It's as if she hears it talking back to her. Yeah. Like that's next level. <laughs> and like I, this ultra racist dude, like big eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, You're short. I don't like short people. It's like, I don't like short people. So ultra wow. evil mega white dude. I know. Short. It's kind of funny in the world because there are no other dwarves. It's like she's going on about elves. And I'm like, well, who else would do it? All there is in this world is elves. There's gnomes. Yeah, there's but gnomes we don't and dwarves. Know. Like, yeah. I know there's different things in the books, but we won't see it in the show. She's well, like the one dwarf that's there. Like, I mean, do they exist? They like, even admit she that from? she's supposed to have a beard later on. She's like, oh, yeah, my girlfriend Gwen, she had a great <laughs> beard. But me, uh, for some reason, I just can't grow a beard. <laughs> they say, I'm supposed to, but I don't have one. Why are they so against bearded women? I thought they like different, like, you know, gender expressions and stuff. But they just cannot do that. They wouldn't do it in Rings of Power. Like, they wouldn't do it in this show. Like, Oh, Jesus. Real it's time, gone. it's dropping while I'm watching it through the whole show. Jesus Christ! Yet, yet the 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 critics still have a higher score. I know yeah, they but always it's still, do. It says a lot that it was 38 percent on the critics' score. Well, I'm surprised it hasn't been locked yet. Normally, when the audience is down this low, they lock it for a while. I think mm -hmm. because they know there's no winning this one. That's why. <laughs> there's yeah. No. yeah, I'm just going to keep no an eye on it, but victory. No oh, yeah, this here. is what you're talking about, Adam. She just I, 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 fuck. Yeah, I'm like, like uh, she, and then she crawls out. And I'm thinking, wow, okay. So, uh, beginning of episode two, I was out and about. I had to pick some stuff in town and stuff, and you know, do my thing. I came back. I knew nothing. I haven't. I'm seeing this scene for the first time, and my God, kill it with fire! <laughs> it's so dark. I know you can't even see it, and you don't even know why. She just looks like a freaking crazy, like serial killer. It's like, what's her motivation? Dermy's first word. Like she hears was, voices and she's see? talking to herself. I mean, like they, uh. they want to show compassion because her girlfriend got and graped, and she's out for revenge. They don't make her likable, and they don't actually show us. You know, maybe why don't you show us flashbacks? If you're so intent on showing us the gay, you're gonna happily show dudes kissing in front of us. You you yearned for it, you lusted for it, you were you you were moist for it. You have the chance. Why don't you show us a flashback of her with her bearded girlfriend? There's some representation. She was no, moist. We're not gonna take the time for that. Well, like you're saying, she's the character who has the most backstory told to us. Like yeah. she has the most anything and it's still horrifically bad like the others is like oh yeah we're just doing this because you know we're doing this at least she like hates elves for a reason and it's still just so poorly like cleaver man Cle cleaver man is just he's a walking nothing he's, he, like he's in MPC. love with the uh, M mr man yeah that's that's and, what and, <laughs> and yeah he she could see up. his she could see that after all he's done he's still good inside okay we never what see. He never does anything in this show. Maybe two people in a fight. We don't see the supposed badass brother Jeff. Never does that. We don't see his past. We see nothing. And he's. We're supposed to feel that he's in such a redemptive relationship. No. Well, he, you know what he does though. No, I do not show. I don't want to see that scene. Hammer so girl and house. like he. He's oh, very, god. oh god, this is so weird. What this the fuck? I, I, I was like, what's up with this? Yes. You scroll forward when they, when you, they change the camera angle with them in with their there it is that one dude is pouring water over that other dude's head at one point. Uh -huh. What the he's pouring? I was just like, so okay, we're, we're Lenny, all gay. Here's the gay. So is Lenny Henry gay? No. Well, now okay, you know so. what happened to all the Harfoots. They're all in that pond. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I've been resisting well, a Harfoot joke this whole time. Oh, we didn't. No. No, like freaking dead feel... to Harfoot. Oh. Come on, guys. We, we I missed it in dropping. the. Hmm. I am what is dropping as well? The VD is dro- oh IMBD. Uh, so yeah, Amazon does, so they're not we, working to lock it up. Yeah, they don't. We, we missed the shot in the previous episode, but Aaron, this guy here, he's supposed to be one of the most intimidating, physically intimidating people in the entire Witcher saga. He is massive. He is so, roided out. He is a better swordsman than even Geralt. Like Geralt has no chance against him. I know. Type stuff. Like and. It, it, there's a shot of him standing next to Lenny Henry from behind, and Lenny Henry towers above him. The man who plays a fucking hobbit is taller than the the character that should be the biggest man in the show. This guy makes Femron look like a you know a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, Femron. Yeah, they could fight. Ugh. No more Adar though. Oh, I miss Adar. I'm gonna miss him. He's the best dad in that show. He's the real the true hero. No Dude, this stuff. whole scene was so pointless. Yeah, like, what is like, like, what's going on? Why did you just also, follow him? It's also a stupid-looking bank. It's, it's a just bank of drawers on a wall. I know, I was trying yeah, to... They're inside the stuff. vault. Reception should not be inside the vault. It makes no sense. It's just one room. The whole bank is just the one room. That Can makes no sense. Stupid is like we're going into a bank and oh, all the money's gone because they took it. And this is the only other dwarf I think that's in the show. I think he's a gnome. No, I think he's a gnome. He's I don't know gnome. what he is like. But he might be a gnome. He doesn't look like one. They're supposed to have elf ears too. He's. I mean, he's I don't know. They don't explain anything. It's just like, well, here's your lore. Like you gotta. And it just seems kind of weird and almost vaguely very bad for, joke a minute, that is, for a minute, you no. think we're going to get a heist episode. Oh, we're going to do a bank heist. We're going to put a crew there and get some money. No, no, we're going to go in here. We're going to get a picture with a dick on his face. And then we're going to fight some guys in a tight. I get, I'll give them credit. They didn't do a lot of shaky cam in this. I didn't catch Ooh, a lot Not of in this cam. scene. But yeah, they just. If you can tear off the hinges to a vault, yeah. they're not good vaults. And I'm, thinking, say, and I'm saying, and I'm saying, like, man, I, I got, I, I have to believe that Michelle Yeoh has mega strength because she's holding that thing like a boss. Well, and they completely waste Michelle Yeoh in this because this is her very first real fight in the show, and she immediately gets poisoned and like taken out of commission for the next two and a half episodes. She doesn't kind of do like a lot. what happens Let's... to Moraine in Wheel of Prime. Like the you... same exact thing happens, and then there's she's got to like she's just Let's... traveling I mean... and. Besides the cell sword contrived nonsense in the final episode, she contributes nothing to the story. Yeah, you're right. Michelle Yeoh completely underutilized. Maybe she doesn't want to do this kind of action anymore. Maybe she doesn't want to do choreographed kung fu anymore, but uh, that's what you bring her on for. <laughs> that's why she's, she's Michelle Yeoh. She, that's what she too. does. It's so funny too because they just keep doing mentioning cell swords. It's like you, they're all expect you to like say, I don't know, watch Game of Thrones or read the books or something. Because it's like uh, there was a lot of context that I think they 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 didn't explain what it was in this world, but like they kind of was saying, Oh, you would have watched Game of Thrones, so you're watching this, so you would know this stuff because they just talk about it so much about oh, like you on. should know what it means. Just go, go back. Go back to this. Go back to the bank scene where they're escaping. It's we can't get through this cell door. It's made of dwarven steel. Wait, my dagger is dwarven steel. Uh huh. Yeah, so, my axe is like bam. Like that axe a, looks uh, so stupid too. It's like uh, okay, you just it's as dumb have... as uh, the Gladriel's dagger shit. Dick dagger. Dick dagger. Dick dagger in well, prison wallet. <laughs> what the fuck did I say? Shane. Dane, are you channeling? For no, her? it was Pips. It was Pips that came up with that term because those stupid men made me go and watch it because I mm-hmm. misattributed it. So, well, uh, I just want to ask if I'm the only one who noticed this. Does this look like the exact same shot as the previous disabling shot and the previous yeah, shot before course. that? Yeah, sure. yes. they're sure. reusing footage. Why not? Why not? What? Why not? At this point. Why not? They care. photocopied and did a copy and paste like uh, Rings of Power. Or, I'm sorry, Rings of Prime. No, oh. And Ugh. we get introduced to the character, like the second most bastardized character in the show, only behind Aridan's bastardization. I didn't even know him. I gotta it's give the shield. Shil- I didn't even hear his name. I never heard his name. 
Cucktoberfest there? I don't even know who that guy is. Like, oh. His name is Avalok. He is the most powerful Ein El sage from the alternate reality with Aridin, the Wild Hunt, whatnot. And he's in love with uh, Siri's ancestor, Lara Duran. And so he decides to help Siri because he's transferring that love down the generations to help him. He, he's supposed to be, like, not physically intimidating, but a little bit more like than this. His big thing is he's got this presence about him. Like, you look at him and you're like, dude, this guy's a genius and he could come up with creative ways to kill me. Like, Geralt met him once in the books and it's in this cave. He looks like a homeless man and Geralt just looks at him and he's like, whoa i i'm gonna step back a bit who the fuck are you like he just has that aura around him do you imagine Geralt even taking a half step back from this thing it looks like Doogie House. i don't know it's like I would well and punch him in his mangina something that we heard when this casting announcement came out when i said this is an avalok people were like oh don't worry about it that's thousands of years ago he's a little kid he's gonna grow up into the role as we found it in the end credit scene he he time travels from now to season one of The Witcher. He, he doesn't even take those few thousand years. So this I is mean, Avalok wait, in season wait, three. He was season one. He was in season one of The Witcher. And did you not yes. see the end credit scene? Uh, I guess my copy didn't have it. <laughs> so they 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 reuse some of the footage from season one when Ciri's dressed up as a boy playing in the street. And she turns and looks, and they added in a shot of Avalok looking creepily at her from the shadows. Okay, so he time travels. Girl. I guess. I guess. Let me go look. Maybe it was. Maybe I. Maybe I tapped out last night when I was done. No, we'll, we'll show it when we get there for you. But yeah, he's here. He's gay, but not as gay as Aridin. They're you all gay. Like, you guys watch that, like Brandon Sanderson, like writing lectures, and like there's things that characters need to have, and it's like competence, proactive proactivity and likability it's like this kind of works on a sliding scale like and you can change as the story goes and it's like nobody's competent nobody's proactive and nobody's likable so like what are these characters other than oh. just ideological like stand-ins and crap there it is i just totally skipped by this oh yeah this part yeah it's oh okay I, I i quit out as soon as the credits hit well, I didn't keep watching. Slowly okay. dying. Well, you forgot this man's name, Adam. Can you tell me what his motivations are, Brother Death? Uh, uh he. See if I can get a shot of his face. First, you thought he was a bounty hunter, and then you learned that he wants to get redemption. I don't know. He wants I, to. He I he have... came up to them and was like bounty hunter, right? Like I'm looking for you guys, but you guys are looking to kill the empress. Oh, cool! I'll kill the empress now too. Yeah, that was the thing. Mini driver says, "Oh, they're being hunted." No, he wasn't hunting them. He was looking to help them. It's like Mini drivers steering us in the wrong direction with her monologuing. And then she says, "And now there were four. I have a theory of what his motivations are: to get in the pants where the dick doesn't is. I mean, he does kiss the the person at the end. He wants to get in them pants. And he knows those people, the, the dyad, the forced dyad, for, before this, he led them to them. So maybe he is working for them, and they said, hey, we need their help to get into the castle. Maybe. They don't say it. And, oh, he he's cool, guys, because he has cleavers. That's something they did in the production, or the promotional I material. That. that looks so dumb. It, it's like, ooh, this girl, she's from the Raven Clan. They use knives. Isn't that cool? They use knives. And Fial, he's from the Dog Clan. They use axes. Isn't that cool? They have axes. Oh, he he has cleavers. Isn't that cool? They don't actually develop the clans. They don't develop anything besides that. Like having a primary weapon set, that's fine for a clan or a certain King's Guard or whatever. But making that the only development that they have, it's, it's really <laughs> cleavers. That's orc weapons. Orc weapons. Oh, it's not as bad as the orc weapons that we see in the final episode that the uh, emperor empress's uh, soldiers have. And we're, we're almost to the gay scene. So yeah, she she's upset that she's not being in as control as she wants. You know, she's not uber powerful empress. So she takes her her new boy toys cloak to stalk Aridin, House of the Dragon style, and. Sees him this go is, see his boyfriend. Um, when I so and uh, this is just it's just here to say, look, we have gay guys. That's all that's there for. It's all it's there for. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't could have affect been the a, plot. I mean, it could have just been a, a conspiratorial meeting between him and a merchant guild elite. Mm-hmm. It did, they didn't have to be gay, but they're gay just a virtue signal. Oh, yeah. and if you saw the guys in uh, the guy on the right, I in saw the, the interviews. I, he is everybody's in everybody's gay. videos of that. Yeah, that dude is flaming. That dude is flaming. <laughs> you get to see two men kiss for the first time in the show. For the first Isn't time that ever. Amazing. We're breaking oh, records God. here. And then and then they continue schmooping it up when he's sitting there, kisses his hand, kisses the side of his head. Oh, look, it's like, oh my God. No. He's so short. Aridin is so short. He this guy cannot beat Geralt in a fight. I don't believe it. He couldn't be, he couldn't beat Doogie Hauser. I'll go back to it. <laughs> you never actually even see him in the show. He couldn't beat Ezra Miller. He couldn't Miller. do anything. Oh, but it's, just, it's like 10 minutes of them just being gay together, and then she's like, hey, uh, I, I know you guys are gay. Do you want to come work for me? And this is when we get uh, the development of the other diversity. We got... Uh, I know. I just like... I, I, I was stunned. I was, I was, I was, I was stunned. I'm like, she's deaf? What? Why is she deaf? What does that matter? It's and uh, this is checking. something... Uh, and this is something I brought up when we were watching it together. But the the actual term that was used when a sorcerer takes an apprentice is leashed. She is leashed to him. I'm not surprised okay. that they didn't use yeah. that specific uh, the word from the lore. <laughs> not surprised they decided to leave that out between these two. I'm just gonna keep using it. He he has what? a mute fat girl leashed to him. But they they want you to believe from this scene alone. Ring. She, she, she's got a nose ring in there, too. She does. She, she does have a nose ring. She yeah. refused to take it out. But they want you to believe from this scene alone that this is the person he cares about more than anybody else in the world so that he can sacrifice her to get ultimate power. Have we seen that before in something? It sounds very, very familiar. You know, cut out what you love. It seems oh uh, Supernatural God. did it. Supernatural did it. Thanos. Uh, Thanos did it. 30, 31. She's got a nose ring. I didn't catch that. Why couldn't we yeah, just have a had... leash going to it? <laughs> Actually, leisher. And yeah, this is when Brother Death joins them. And he's like, yo, uh, I, I was going to hunt you, but now I'm not. That cool? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, Michelle, yeah, do it. She could have had a, a little fight. Yeah. Something. W- Something. Just like, you know what us, that reminded me of that one action. particular guy? Do you guys remember in Braveheart, I think, where they were getting, like trying to get people to fight against the English and they're like, hey, we have like this common enemy, the English, we hate the English and they get that crazy, I think he was like Irish guy or something. Maryland. Yeah, he has that kind of like manic, the same energy as that guy. I can see but, it. Like, we already have some brave part later when she says freedom yeah. 70 times in a sentence. But yeah. yeah I, I, just, that, I think that's such freedom. a great thing because it's like literally the guy says, oh, you hate the English? Well, I love killing English too. Let's go kill English people. Like they don't even say that in the show. It's like, oh, it's, I'm a bounty hunter. I'm looking for you, but you're killing the Empress. Okay, let's kill the Empress because I don't know reasons. Who he's trying to be, and I figured it out last night. He's trying to be Finnan from Last Kingdom. And you know who, and you know that, you know, the king was Finnan. Yes. Yeah. He got, I'm like, oh, I like him. Oh, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You and I, well, you and I know Last Kingdom. So that's, I like yeah, that actor. He, he, oh, he's yeah. dead. Okay. <laughs> this, they should not have poisoned Michelle Yao. And that just means no more action sequences. Give us a fucking action sequence. There's like so few in this show. It's mm-hmm. just walking and talking. Teleporting and, and talking, and then the big fight with between uh, bearded axe man gonna be Witcher <laughs> and the beastie with the three tails on its head. That's so l- lame and pathetic. Of a oh, did you enjoy fight. how they got the silver sword? <laughs> I thought I, I they, they did come right out and said like that. Obviously, that sword is silver. I guess and just a random statue just happens to have a silver, have silver sword silver right sword, next to yeah. where they're fighting. You know yeah. that is a coincidence of the ninth degree. Yeah, but, but what's the have... significance of it? Even I was monsters. It you need silver to fight monsters. But I, I was hoping that they do a little bit of better setup, like saying his Netflix. Or I mean his Netflix. His necklace was an ornate claw. His dog claw. 
it was an ornate thing so it was jewelry so it was made of silver and so he'd accidentally pick it up and slash at it with it and it would burn the wound and they're like "Ooh, there's silver let's go find some silver to fight it but no it's just a oh statue fall over Ooh, it's shiny let me grab that Ooh, i'm gonna hulk out and rip it out <laughs> well, i had a question uh, that i've been meaning to ask you the centipede monster for lack of better terms why did it die when it came through the porthole? Because the portal was cut in half. They pulled an the Infinity in War. Half. They pulled an Infinity War, cut cut it in and half. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that, I saw that coming. You. It does oh, they, the same. they just closed the portal. I thought it came through the portal and was fine because it was still chasing her. No, no, no. It, it, that was just like spasm for like the remaining breaths. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, that was a legitimate right. kill. Okay, I don't have a problem with that okay. kill. That was a legitimate kill, but I mean, well, yeah. All right, we get this random vision sequence, and do we find anything about these two characters that we didn't already know? Uh, no. He still uh, thinks about humping his ex girlfriend, I guess. I don't know. No, no, you know what? We she was doing oh all God, the yeah. work there, man. <laughs> How it should are. be. But yeah, he fought in some wars and fucked a chick. All and right. then we... she puked up black blood on him, like Don Lemonless got puked up black blood on him, too. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. It, you know what was funny about this <laughs> one, too, is like. That's what I'm gonna call we it. We find from out now on, that Zaya. like um, Mary Sue, like hero girl, like she just burned a freaking building full of people alive. I mean, yeah, that's an initiation for the Raven Clan. There's nobody good, and this is something that uh, we talked about on our stream together, Lady B and Mustang, when we were talking about the first book. The Witcher is very good at nuance and yes. making you feel yes. for bad people. But this show isn't even trying to do that. It's just like, everybody's bad, everybody is evil, but you're supposed to like these people anyway. That one was like, yes, they did those bad things, they've accepted it. It was just, there's some character development there. Like, Novellan is so much a better character than her, and she did something probably just as bad, killing a bunch of children or, you know, uh, sexually assaulting a priestess. Both really, really bad. But Novellan's cooler. But that's that's what we learned about her. That's it. There's nothing. There's Tragic no redeeming. backstory. She did it oh. because she had to do it. Like I, I thought th that she was pulling out a miscarriage. That's what I thought this scene was. Yeah, it was too. I thought she was pulling out a baby. Then it was a bird. I thought it was foreshadowing because I knew she was going to be pregnant by the end for yeah, with Laura yeah, Duran. Yeah. And yeah. so I thought, and when it was a bird, I was like, ooh, is that a swallow? Because that's what the Elder Bloodline is called. They're swallows. And Ciri's called a swallow, but it was a raven. So it's just nonsense, pseudo cool 14 year old. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you called a bird out of her stomach? It doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah. It doesn't that? actually represent anything. But this is when we get the forced dyad, and he's suddenly outside of his prison for and no he's, reason. And his hair is nice and styled, and <laughs> and he's a, he's a good guy. What do we know about him? A uh, forced dyad uh, fights uh, bad guys. And I'm like, how do you get out and, of the prison? Magical genius, but magical genius. And, and sometimes like does experiments Glover. that he shouldn't. And uh, he's got a forced dyad with um, uh, cerebral palsy. Chick, a, a, a nice dude who doesn't, have, a dude who doesn't have nice tits. They, they were uh, really proud. Totally Apparently, she's dude. the other, um, she's the other disabled representation in the show. They were very proud of that. That's why you see people constantly helping her walk because she can't actually walk on her own. She can just stand on her own because of how bad her cerebral palsy is. It's like that, that sucks. But using that as the basis for her character marketing is kind of shitty. So that's shitty. why she had to ride that horse when they were initially heading out. Mm hmm Because they were all yeah, grouped she... together and just on a horse randomly. Yep, she can't stand up on her own. Someone always helps her up. She can't walk on her own, but she can stand. She... So why did we put her in this show? Trans disabled representation. Oh god. The fact that it's actually a thing. They invented everything. They didn't invent Wait. Oh did Adam and... say she had nice tits? No, I yes, said a dude did. that doesn't have nice tits. That's what I was. No, oh. it, I, I was worried you were going to pull an as there. No, I'm but, very careful. Yeah, but the dwarf has got her revenge. Everybody, she's murdered everyone who had to do with Gwen's death. She Aren't you guys no happy? She, her teeth creep me out. There's something about her that's just. She's missing her inside. Her, she's missing her. In, in she's her. just a. She's a psychopath. Mm. She's like no the most to like her. 
<laughs> should have been a good penny in Game of Thrones. She's quirky. Yeah, Penny. I was like, oh, yeah, I should have been a good Penny. Yeah. She's Harley <laughs> fucking Quinn. Just kill her off already. I want to move on. So. No, just she's not. Harley everybody. was cute. They just kill all the white men <laughs> except for one at the end, and the rest of the girls are unscathed. <laughs> unscathed. She took an arrow to the shoulder. She took an she arrow walked it to off. the shoulder. I know. She walked, totally walked it off. And then was able to shoot the arrow right back. Yep. Ripped it out. No problem. And then gets to slap a guy on the ass. Come on, big guy. Let's go. <laughs> that was sexual assault, by the way. Yeah. By modern standards, absolutely. All right. Ended by Gwen of the Flowers. May he suffer eternity in the lost place. The fuck what? is the lost place? That's so funny Why? that they called Gwen of the Flowers. Because remember who, like, um, Chrissy Cole killed was Jeffrey of Lawnmouth. That was Knight of the Flowers. And that was the guy that got his skull bashed at the wedding in the show. Why is she painting on the walls? She's leaving the message. That's what these subtitles are. That's what these she, runes mean. But they're she's the painting it. Show look, are so that's what a sane person does. Like right. The runes just look like scribbling throughout this entire show. There's no way they actually mean anything. Just supposed Girl. to triumphant murder, and we don't see it. We're going scene by scene, and it's so freaking painful. Oh, I'm skipping a lot. I'm trying to skip as much as I we know. can. No, we went scene by scene yesterday. Two. Yeah, we did. We watched it yesterday. I feel like this is not as bad as yesterday, but still, Jesus. Six percent. All right, now they have a plan to make the first Witcher. That's what the rest of the episode is. Uh, I have just... a question about this, and this is like a lore question. What would give them the idea, even to? I mean, because I, I get the, I get the feeling from this is that there's other dimensions with monsters. I don't know if, if some random like alien creature just came through a portal. Like, probably the last thing I would want to do is like, let's use this monster to make a freaking like genetically engineered magic creature. I mean, Listen, I don't know. That's common sense, and that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, if this is a world where they had don't have monsters, and these mo there's no explanation for the monsters, anything like, where do they get this information? Where's their motivation to think that this would work? Like, because he went through a portal and he found bad things. But he explained it. It, it was uh, that fast too, by the way. Very fast. And but it looks like we need to give our friend Adam an out. I thought Mellow Mondays was until uh, five thirty my time. Yeah, but I got I got shit to do before that. So. Oh, <laughs> oh. To do. Right, Lisa, you, Adam. Good to see you. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to have you, man. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, just tonight, uh, Mellow Mondays, seven ten p.m. my time. We're starting a little earlier, trying to trying to start things on so late. Uh, still kind of wonky because we're still in the holiday week. So uh, other than that, uh, just check out the channel. Uh, I might move things around this week. Just, just stay tuned. Uh, check out videos. But yeah, tonight, Mellow Mondays, uh, we're just going to hang out, chill stream, and uh, see what happens. I never know what's going to happen. I don't. So I don't. All right. Thanks, Jed, for having me. Uh, I'm happy I could help piss on this for you. <laughs> so, I appreciate the help. Join you in your hour of need. Because mm -hmm. you've been there for me, so it's all good. All right, guys. Thanks, for me. I will see you guys later. Take it easy, guys. Bye. 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 I'll be and joining I his... Uh, Mellow Monday stream tonight after we're I, done here. I I here. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, like, you know, I've got Brian and um he's in our chat and he's like, like, what's worse, like Wheel of Time or Witcher? And I'm like, this show is like the you know, if there was like a non-binary gangbang between Wheel of Prime and Rings of Power, this is the resulting child you would get. It is so bad. It is the same kind of desecration to the themes and the lore of that was done in Wheel of Time, where they take the most important thematic elements and just totally subvert them. And I I have no words for this, Brian. It's, like, so bad. I've seen all three of these now. I don't even know the Witcher lore this much, but I, just from reading the books and, like, looking at the themes and the way that this universe works, it's just a subversion of everything, and it's nothing but crap and propaganda. So, to answer your question. <laughs> well, uh, I got to say real fast, Hail the Nerporeal Lifeform got a 99 super sticker of a vomiting emoji. I, I feel it, man. I feel it. I appreciate the support. <laughs> Rotten Tomato update. It got down to five and they bumped it back up to seven. This thing's going to tank worse than anything. 
so bad. Uh, episode three is just really boring. Not a whole lot happens besides at the end of it. So there's not a whole lot I actually want to talk about. The normal stuff apply, the bad writing, bad dialogue, no character development between the uh, Force Dyad. Avalok magically finds the book right away. They're arguing about who's going to be the Witcher. Over this next section, up to the happy wake that they have in case she dies. Anybody have anything they want to say about all that? I remember watching this and I thought this was episode four. And my mom did too. She was like, oh, I thought we were on episode four already. I'm like, no, there's another one. <laughs> there's another one. Yeah, we got Lenny Henry, we, you know, doing Hobbit things. We got Willow in the Willow Cave feeding everybody with food that is supposed to be in short supply. Mm -hmm. Getting Isn't high on mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. Isn't this centipede in this one too? The centipede we were already passing, it, they killed it. Oh, okay. did we? Yeah. Oh, that's my starts. bad. Oh, that's well, really bad that we're, we don't a, care. It's a shitty looking centipede. That's what I got to say. That's all I got to say. It looked dumb. And the other thing, too, is there's like no explanation for any of this. It's like, why, why is anyone surprised with like monsters? It's like, how would they know to use a monster? Like, why would they, where would they even get the idea, like, to make a witcher? Like, what would Wait, give them the idea that, I mean, it's kind of their explanation is like the idea of kind of like certain, you know, cultures and stuff. If I can consume this animal, I'll take on the the prop physical properties of this animal. And they're just, there's no like demonstrations of how magic works in this world. So they just say, we're going to do, we're going to wave our hands around and take this dead heart of a monster that we don't know anything about and infuse it into a person. And this is going to make this person so powerful. He can fight the evil wizard guy. So the idea was because Lenny Henry magicked up a monster of his own, that that's the flying creature thing that suits lasers from his hair. They're going to create their own monster. To be on par with him. And but that's where the monster heart comes into effect. But and don't, wouldn't Lady you Henry. agree, Dermy, you guys, wouldn't you agree that that's like the hugest subversion of like the main theme of The Witcher? Yeah. It's a whole idea that like, you know, it's your own misdeeds, it's your own sins, it's mm -hmm. again, your own transgressions that make you a monster, not the literal freaking monsters. But Lenny Henry, you know, okay, I'm just going to call it Hobo Baggins did not conjure <laughs> up the monster. Hobo, monster. Hobo Baggins was given the monster by the, I guess we're going to say it's a Jan because we don't know, the the the, uh, the orb light thingy. And I can't even wait. call it the eye of Sauron because that's later on in episode four we get Sauron's eye. Shit. Wait, wait. So the, the eye of the, the blue queef dust, I don't fucking know. <laughs> decided hey here's a monster Run but everybody thinks death. that he made the monster so that's why we're making the witcher so queef dust gave him the monster yes that's what that's what you're saying uh -huh. yes yes that's what happened jesus fucking christ why did the queef dust do it though what did the, the queef dust want to do chaos it ate too Kill much everything? taco bell oh crap that's a taco bell monster it's annoyed <sighs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, anymore. Yeah. Help! <laughs> I don't want to live I said anymore. This in our videos, at least when I was watching Rings of Power, I was able to do head cannon stuff and do some yeah, sort of yeah. fanfic where Durin and Elrond and Gilgalad were in this weird love triangle, and everybody knew it, but nobody wanted to outright say it. People were homophobic, things like that. That was getting me through. I have nothing. I know, I'm you not... can't even make it make sense in your own head. Like, I was thinking, like, well, why did Adar, like, love the mountain? And the only reason I can think of is because he loves his orcs and he takes care of them and he didn't want them to get sunburned. So, obviously, yeah. he's a good, caring dad. But, like, what is going on here? There's nothing. And this scene is very problematic, I want to say. The gay man threatening to kill the disabled woman of plus size. <laughs> you know what this show did really well? Man. Is they did their hierarchy of oppression like really well? Like who has more like privilege? Who gets yeeted? Like you know, mm -hmm. who's allowed to yeet who? Yeah, like you know, it's like the nasty white colonizer empress throws the black man, and he the lower class proletariat, the black man in the magic prison, and it's 
<laughs> that's why i say this is the wokest thing i've ever seen i didn't think i'd see something more woke than you know captain marvel more woke than brings the power but jesus christ like as as adam said this is the culmination of everything bad that we've seen in the last few years it's a bigger subversion lore wise than even the timeless children as gary said in his tweet about this he said if he was trying to write a a parody about woke fantasy he couldn't have done a better job than this this is more woke than broke black mountain hey broke back mountain was a wonderful love story between two men Anne Hathaway's tits are in it, so that's yeah, good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah. And there was actually <laughs> they actually had one. tits in it. Don't have any here. Nope, nothing here. Oh, what was the quote somebody said about this one in nudity? There oh, was yeah. a quote that yeah, after season two, they were they were criticized for having little to no nudity in season two. So they said Blood Origin would have a lot of nudity to make up for it. I just so, want to why though? Visit. Like we got no nudity. I just want give some me tits. some titties. Go tit. Tit, tit, Go tit. tit, tit. <laughs> I mean, at least we got like a silver sister. Like... Not no more. We don't. I know. Yeah, she's gone. At least on this is mortar country. We had Lady B moving her camera around. <laughs> Again. Gotten... Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll it, ruin this. How bad this really is. We'll see something good. We're not allowed to see good right now. Wait <laughs> yeah, a little bit later tonight. <laughs> In the uh, green yeah. room. I'm that, slowly dying. That bleach our eyes out. Okay, yeah, this the scene in the cave was so silly. It's like, again, no explanation. Yeah, and it's like, this... let's have a wake, because I'm going to kill myself, because of becoming this witcher thing that we still didn't establish. Like, did you notice how, I know you told me that, like, the, the witcher's, like, ceremony or whatever is called, like, what they call it, the trial of grasses or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, it. they just drop that randomly. Like, there's, I'm like, there's no witchers yet. Like, why would they call it that? That's what Mini Driver calls it in uh, voiceover. But, <sighs> yeah, that's not the, the trial of the grasses. Level. Probably. But yeah, this is just pathetic CW. Oh, my girlfriend's dead. Oh, that's sad. What about you? I'm white. I don't have a sad story. My I, job I is to sit here as a bad. white male and affirm your story and nod my head and act like I'm really into you. I thought they were going to beg, but like... Uh, he's in love with the, the other other man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we get another song, the same song, over and over and over again. I know, did, like, oh, her whole speaking. being a bard, it's like, you know, I don't know, like, pickling. Like, are you a warrior or are you a bard? I've never seen that before. I, this is one of those times where you can't accept the 10 rating because you no. know people are BSing. That one score, though, is probably legitimate. I'm surprised there's not a review bombing argument about it yet. I know I'm because really everybody surprised, and I'm it. like, I would love to talk to uh, my friend in the chat from the White Cloaks, but we he's been tracking the ratings of stuff, and in in our like group over there in our Discord, it's like some people in it came up with a rating system where um they just kind of throw away the high and the low scores to look at kind of like an average because it's people that'll like simp for the show will give it like oh, straight tens all the way, and then you could have review bombing where they just would look like rate it the lowest thing, so like the most like av like the best average you could. Get is if you throw away the two highest scores. So we were looking fair because I th I give the show a 0.5 out of 10. So they so throw I away my review. But we wouldn't do that. No, it was just a metric we made up for ourselves so we could kind of look and see like to huh. just get rid of the people that would like give it really high or low either way. See what like normal B. people do. We do have Lady B. Jed, pull that back up again. It's still there. I want you to explain your femininity female friends there. By what? Why don't you explain to us the females? Splend oh, there we go. I'm sorry. Let me like make this a little bigger so I could read it. I'm blind. Yeah, okay. women <laughs> liked it a lot more. You know what I think it is? It's because there's more people, like more women ascribe to the sort of feminist arguments and the sort of like Marxism agenda. They are like more supportive. And they're of, old like women. Women over 45 liked it the most. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's I it. Don't... Repeal the 19th. Fuck it all. Fuck it all. <laughs> we always say that all the time, but that's just kissing me and my little anarchist heart. So, yeah, repeal everything. I don't know what to say. That's just bad. <sighs> it's really bad. I'm slowly dying. <laughs> all um, right. I, I want to get through this shit. So, 
Um, this is the will they won't they bone. Oh God. Oh, are, we bone, are, are, are we on three or four? I forget. Three. Three. Well, that's kind of like where we got we lost a time, and it's like, why would they have any reason to have sex with each other at all? Like, there's, there's no... no relationship between them. There's no chemistry. There's no progression. It's I hate you. Oh, we could be friends though by the blade. Oh, do you want to fuck? It's not much... just fuck already. Good. <laughs> and then we skip to the trial of the grasses because he didn't want her to do it. He's he's self sacrificing. He sacrifice white savior himself. complex. White he's got savior! a white savior. <laughs> this scene uh. could have actually worked. Look, take away all the lore breaks. Take away everything. That is a good idea. That that is a good scene. You know, somebody else is sacrificing it. So and you don't want them to suffer. So you go through it instead for them. You sacrifice yourself and potentially die to save the person you love. That that's a nice little moment, but they fuck it up because I don't care if he lives or dies. No, no. he's my favorite character, but at the same time, I don't care if he lives or dies. I know he doesn't care. Like, like why are like, all the potions tar? I don't know. Black don't know. goo. Really bad. And Avalok tries to open a portal. He can't because he's pathetic and wimpy and not diverse enough. Oh, there we enough. go. I think that's our first shot of her uh, plastic armor. That this looks armor so is... bad. Why is she wearing armor? Like, it's not it at the fight. Guard? Like, if it was like during the fight and she put it on, yeah, sure. There's no fight. Uh -uh. And uh, Lady B, this is the armor that he was saying was the Tully armor that Aridin's wearing. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. Definitely, it looks like the kind of it's like scale mail. I mean, it looks it's not like Tully, it looks... it's a blackfish. Yeah, well, it's, it's Tully. They're all the Tully army wears it. You can yeah, see that's the definitely the blackfish. blackfish thing. Yeah, that's you the blackfish the armor, but it's also kind of like they had the same scale thing of the Numenorians with their Where, stupid, where's the the stupid zipper? queen always wearing look, it. Look at the back of her neck, yeah, you work your way down, you can see it. Yep, <laughs> I wasn't even on zipper watch, I was so angry, but I usually go for a zipper watch. Uh, I, hate I hate this costume. I hate everything. I hate the. Uh, you're absolutely right. Dandelion is not part elf and sort of related to Siri. Like what the fuck? I know. I mean, he, he was like he show. was like taking the brunt of my rage as I was watching last time. So I, I give him props for that. And I'm yeah, just like you don't know what they're doing to this floor. It's... God, that's bad that somebody else has picked up exactly what we talked about with Dandelion. That's what See, broke Jed the most when I pointed out to him that Dandelion was the singer. All right, I want to see if I can get a shot of the, the heart growing tentacles. Yeah, what was this uh, all about? How how did they have this knowledge? Like, There is another <laughs> creature from another show that looks almost exactly like that heart, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Well, A, that heart's too big, and if you know centipedes, uh, I'm not an etymologist entirely, but I know enough to know that centipedes don't have human looking hearts maybe sized yeah. up like that they do so it's a massive heart scale wise it is way too big even for the monster that they showed earlier yeah, yeah can, exactly I can show my yeah i can show my dark frog he's more uh, entertaining than the show was he was but that's the trial of the grasses everybody the first witcher is an elf even though he shouldn't be he's made by monster dna even though he shouldn't be and yay and, and, and he's not the, sterile he's not sterile even though even the witcher tv show confirmed that witchers are now witchers are supposed to be like very in control of all their bodily functions like they barely breathe they're quiet their heartbeats are really slow they're very calm collected their emotions aren't gone but they're more in control of their emotions than most people that's why he, uh, regular folk think that they don't have emotion it's not rage monster hulking out beast who wants blood he's not a berserker they made him into a berserker. That's not how witchers work. No, I mean, the first story, it's like he drinks his potions and he turns into, like, Zen warrior to, like, kill the Stria and, like... Oh, there's the vines. Yeah, but no, I mean, he... he has to be this monster. They have to make him the monster because he's the white man and the only way to control mm -hmm. his white male rage, his white male toxicity is to get the black woman to sing him a song, to give him her sex like she does after the scene and to calm him down and to civilize him because I think that is what the ultimate thesis of the show is, is that mm -hmm. the future is female and it's black and it's everything at the that we see in the final scenes. That's like what well, they... 
they made him a beast so that you could kill him and then they could have the prophecy that that confused it like in the beginning the prophecy was you're destined to kill a monster so she thought that was going to mean that she'd become the first witcher but that uh, they wouldn't be able to get that confusion unless he became a monster too so it's a will they won't they subvert your expectations with it so they made him a monster so that prophecy could be a will they won't they and it's just that's not the trial of grasses that's when Geralt became a witcher, they didn't need to find a random monster heart and stick him with it to make him a witcher. Monsters have nothing to do with it. And it's I know, so that's dumb. such a subversion of the freaking plot. I hate it so much. It's like the whole thing is that, like, you don't have to be some freaking creature to be a monster. You could be that guy that, like, raped that woman and got turned into the freaking beast. It's like, oh, freaking... Uh. Or the things that were monsters in the book, like that, like, sylvan creature, like, they called it a devil, but hey, it wasn't a devil, it was just trying to help the elf people so they didn't kill the humans, like. Mm! It's... They don't understand it. And this is another example of not understanding space and time. Apparently, their campsite with the dwarf, who just randomly is a part of their crew now for no reason, is close enough that she can ride to the city, get some money, Get some cell swords without the 50 soldiers that are following her around at this point and go all the way back in the time that the trial of the grasses took. They must be right on the city walls close enough that they'd be found out. They have like a portal stone like they had it in like Wheel of Prime. It even looked the same crappy plastic. And does this um, exterior look familiar to you, Lady B? Yeah, it looks like Marine. <laughs> well, uh, inside the city and, and the, the coastline Yunkai, does. Yeah. But... This part, the way the parapet's set up, where the gate is, with those soldiers coming out. Where's Dario Naharis and his toxic masculinity, like, fighting the dude? Like, that was... With the Baron Field, this kind of reminded me of the beginning of the Battle of King's Landing in Season 8, when they slit, yeah. uh, what's her... Uh, Sandy, they cut off her head, and yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what this reminded me of. This looked like King's Landing, because in the earlier seasons, it's in the middle of a forest, and all of a sudden, it's outside a desert. This just kind of looks like that to me. So some more Game of Thrones for you. Yeah, she yeah. wants her sword back. Oh, no. What? That looks like Troy. Yeah, does it does look, look like, like that too, huh? Oh, He's good. all like, Hector, Achilles, yep, Achilles. That's Troy. That's so funny because so, my cat is named Achilles. And every time I've watched that, they start screaming at him. And he like would be like, what's up? Every fucking show they possibly could steal from except The Witcher. Except the Witcher. And I, I think it would have been a good idea for her to tell the others her plan. Just going to say that. Making them, keeping them in the dark is probably a really bad idea. Yeah, but it as seems we see, like a really contrived, like, oh, I'm going to, like, betray you guys. Like, fine, just go. It's just whatever. cheap trying to confuse the audience is all. Mm -hmm. But I knew they were not going to make the Asian chick, the Asian representation bad. No, of course not. It's colonizer woman. Oh, uh, shit. Not only is it Troy on the outside, the pillars that we talked about yesterday, how yeah. they were kind of going down, that's from inside of Troy. I'm looking at it. Oh, my God. Well, and, and look at these scabbards. They've got these dumb scabbards to make up for that dumb blade that we're going to see later on. Yeah. They're going to be really fat on the end. And here they bone. Oh, God. This, like, this, this scene went on for so long. I just, me and my mom were talking about like the logic of it. And she's like... And he, when he O faces, he goes, his eyes turn black. Yeah. And that's something that should only happen with potions. Witcher's eyes only change with potions, but apparently he doesn't need the potions. You, you know, know what that is? That you know, all the black stuff, it's his toxic masculinity. It's trying to fight. So she has to fuck him because that's the only way he can, she can keep it in check. I mean, that's like literally that what it is. It's like she calms him with a song. It's like, is he, the, is he a witcher or he is a monster that she has to kill? Jeez. And yeah, again, witchers are supposed to be sterile, but somehow she, he knocks her up and it's like super long. <laughs> I know it goes on and on and on. And I'm just like, oh, stop. So we free and it, letter Henry and he feels mad because he's oppressed because he's low born and also racism. Yeah, yeah, also racism, so and we're gonna put he, the black man in the prison, so he's, he's justified. But Mirren's just Mirren's really dumb on top of being super evil. Like later on, she's like, Hey, Fial, do you want to still be my boyfriend even though I slit your sister's throat? No, 
that's so weird. I could never have predicted that. Here, she's like, hey, I, I know I deposed you from power, but do you want to help? Sure, betrays him. I can't believe Balor betrayed us. You're just retarded. You're not a good empress. You're not smart enough. Like I said, Make it's like they can't, they can't they can't pick Elaine with her character. It's like you cannot have a character that's a victim of her circumstances and also a mastermind of a freaking coup. It's like women are capable of e being evil. Women are capable of being monsters, like in that um like the Ren Ren, whatever her name is. I can't remember the names. Ren free story like yes that was a question and that was such a good theme because it's like was she a monster because they thought she was or wasn't she that would be a good way to do this empress is like did she become a monster because that's the only way she could survive I would feel compassion for someone like that if her story arc was like hey I have to kill everyone else or they're going to kill me. I would feel something for her. I yeah. mean, look at, like, the character of Tuan in freaking, like, Wheel of Time. Like, she's an empress. She's a slight woman. And her life is always in danger. So she has to be ruthless and has to kill people. But you could kind of, like, feel something for her because that's, like, where she came from. It doesn't make her a nice or better person. But, like, it's understandable. And just because something understandable doesn't mean you have to empathize with it and say it's good. It just makes it more interesting and traits cruelly complicated complex characters which they just can't do in the stars well we reach we always talk about a one-for-one one, uh, adaptation pull it up jed that's a one-for-one one adaptation all right oh my god it and is. that's better wow. cgi <laughs> because i knew how to use cgi back then crowds so you can disguise Ooh. acts it, it's to add certain things it's not to actually be leaned upon it's Safety net. So funny. It's totally but that's a one for one. I mean, they literally stole it from Troy. <laughs> oh, and uh, I just want to say real fast: Do they not have more than one prison cell? <coughs> no. 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 Plus, you know, they're leashed together. He, she has to follow him everywhere. You know? It's like a dominate or something. Yeah. And uh, um, were any of you surprised when this happened? No, that's a site from the 300. Yeah, I know. Except it was really crappy because there's like they can't even close off the gap or anything. Like, it's so dumb. Well, the bigger problem that surprised me is, yeah, Michelle Yao staying a good character didn't surprise me. But how the fuck did she use that money that she just barely got from the Empress to pay for these cell swords that come in and save them from these soldiers? And then how the fuck do how, where are they in relation to literally the world? They've got to be right outside the castle. You think <laughs> something like this you'd be able to see from the castle wall? Yeah. I you know, think. Or like... Yeah, it, like um, they're saying in the chat, Mongolian now. Oh my what? fucking god. And yet, none of the fight scenes interest me. This is so me. funny because she just like took out everyone with her hammer, and then she goes and she does the Legolas thing with the two arrows, and they just bam God. kill those two NPCs. But they're like this; they're not like you got to do it, yeah, horizontally. And is she in on the plan because she's on foot behind the bad guys? Yeah. Why was she back there? <laughs> was she covering the retreat, making it so they couldn't retreat? Oh, we and also missed. We there's a scene where she, women pee. Oh, oh yeah, God. They, just I think that's just before this. They randomly just have to show yeah. her squatting in a bush. Does nothing to the plot. It's not humorous, like or uh, character building, like Tyrion pissing off the wall in season one. It's just women pee two guys, and she pees standing up. They always have to cover her in blood. Because she's, she's a psychopath. Creepy. She's creepy as fuck. Yeah, she totally has Harley Quinn vibes with that hammer, because isn't that like kind of what she carries around in the comics? Mm -hmm. like yeah, she has a hammer. A um, now, Adam said this was his favorite character, but he was weird. Um, Man of the One Ball was his nickname. Because he has, two ball, he has two balls that are so big that they look like a pomegranate. Like what the fuck? You need to see a doctor, mate. You probably I, have cancer if you if your balls look like a giant pomegranate. 
Hope it's and then Michelle too. Yao even smirks when he says she's seen them. So yeah, they they fucked in the past, and but yeah. he had to she she had to pay him still. But yeah, the man of the one ball. That's what we know about this man. Great character development. Okay, dump, playing devil's advocate now. You know, they know each other from the past. Maybe before she got the fifty people, the army. She went to him and said, "Hey, I'm gonna go get this." And when did she deal. have time to leave? The party, go find them, negotiate it, get back. There's just I don't know. I'm just doing devil's advocate now. How, how'd she find them? She know where to find them. He, she knows where that dick is. Yeah, I thought she was she's trying even to smirking like. When she, yeah, she says gets it. her like imp, like the empress's like soldiers because she thinks because the empress thinks she's gonna betray her friends and then she ends up double crossing them with people that just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then the Empress double crosses her because, oh, you betrayed your friends. That's not nicey. I'm going to kill you now. Yeah, I don't want you. I mean, that's probably <laughs> a good idea, sword. but. Fuck. Oh, oh um, the bad guys, not a whole lot of diversity in the bad guys. Uh, I'm not no, seeing any white women. bad. Like, <laughs> I, see a black I know man. it's so funny, too, because the women like kind of come into the next in the next scene when they get to the gates. And it reminded me of when and um lord of the rings i think it was the third movie when like the like mary and pippin and that chick are kind of all dressed up in the armor and it's just they look so silly because it's not like it's not like rings of power where they had like the female soldiers so that wouldn't look weird and they don't even try to hide the dwarf chick and i'm like if dwarves and elves don't get together or like wouldn't Wait. you just kind of yeah yeah you can kind of tell Go there's a dwarf back. right there like tie so up your hair even i don't know paraplegic Trans Jenga is there on a horse. Mm -hmm. Yes. The horse on the other from? side of her, there's another horse. Okay, yeah. Horse forward. watch, guys. Horse watch. Horse pips. Y yeah. Um, I'm forward. right here. I can deal with horses. You can deal with horses. Okay, you too. Okay. I, I do have to ask Jed something. Do you still have those runic symbols that we would looked at earlier? Because in my research and being stupid bored last night, I found something that looked like big smile. When we get to the scene when they're heading to to the gate, they lose a horse. They do lose a horse. They ate it. And now paraplegic girl is walking fine, it looks like. I don't put para, trans -gender. Stunt double. Instead of a stunt double for stunts, it's the stunt double for walking. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be a stunted double? A stunt. <laughs> and the, the dreadlocks just... Yeah. <laughs> look... Those don't stand out at all. Hold on, let me see here. Yeah. I don't see. I don't she ain't see got it. none. <laughs> and uh, there's some Star Wars there. here. They're gonna Chewbacca him. You know, the monster put some handcuffs on him. Sneak into the oh. bad guys. Little, 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 little. Your beard right there went so perfect over that. <laughs> My beard? Yeah, it was. Perfect. I love how they find like perfectly fitted armor for the like um, dwarf chick. Like that's just all the armor fits them perfectly. Don't ask questions. Just go with it. Yeah, we couldn't do a gambling where you know fell to the floor. Yeah, that was great. That's sizeism. I know. Look at her. It was silly. She I don't looks. give a shit. I watched director's cut Saturday. Mm, oh yeah. So good. She just grabbed his ass and he's like, "Did you just do that?" No, she she put a finger up there. <laughs> no, she put a bow up there. He's got the prison wallet. Ah! That's why he's... Yep. Eh. It's the toxic masculinity leaving him. When she yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not magical power. It's this nasty, toxic masculinity. Jesus. I, I'm slowly dying. Oh, and he just owed. Look at that. He's just going to witch her out. <laughs> Look at like, that. Like, uh... <laughs> She's fiddling around with his butt. I know that just looks wrong when you look at it like slow. It's God. Ugh. Goes from but the episode is over. We're on the final one now. Yay! Oh my God, that's so much. like I kept watching this. There's another one. There's another one. Oh, like no. Everyone's no. like, you need more episodes. You needed more. It's like no, we had too much. End it. I couldn't have I... done six. I couldn't have. I don't think I could have. I. I, I our four or nearly five hour video would have been a lot longer if we had more episodes or recording. I, I need to go. I'm I'm dying. You can't handle it anymore, Dermot. No, I I don't want to do this anymore. It's so bad. It's so painful. 
All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Dermy. I know you yeah. have to head on out. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Uh, videos coming back every day, and then Friday, don't know what I'm doing. Saturday, don't know what I'm doing. And Sunday, don't know what I'm doing. Don't know what I'm doing basically next weekend. We'll figure it out. Fun. But I, I will see you guys on Mellow Monday. All, All right. right. I'll see Jeremy. you guys there. <laughs> Have a good yeah, day. You too. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, we're almost through. You know, I do kind of like the design of the crown. I think it's visually pretty. But does it work with this? No. That armor is horrible. It kills yeah, the rest it, of the it, outfit. It really clashes the gold and the black. I mean, it could work. It just doesn't, like... It's like the sure. level of skill it'll take to build those things. Like, it's just... No. It's too different. Now, this is their first colonization mission. They're here to bring culture. Aridin leads the way. And then... Oh no, Baylor's betrayed us. He kills <laughs> his <laughs> leashed apprentice. So sad. Slits his throat. It's like, yeah, the deaf, non binary person that does nothing but stand there and nod when he does stuff. This is a great character. They killed the big fairy from the, the other Netflix show, Wink Saga. And then, yeah, Aridin gets sucked up in whatever the fuck that was. Not sure what that is. I'm not... I didn't even know what really happened or what they, they were trying to do there. Like... Oh, I thought they killed him, but I was making a turkey, so I was just listening. I'd seen it, and I'm like, okay, they're killing him. And I'm like, eh. Yeah, and he's like the big bad of the video games. And if they had killed him, I would have been pissed. But this is something that Adam pointed out in the green room. At this moment, it turns to ice around him, ice and snow. Mm -hmm. oh, we think that might that. we think that might be how the uh, the white frost started and that's really bad you guys haven't gotten to the white frost in the book yet it's different in the books and the game so i'll tell you the game version because it's not what it is in the books but in the game version it's an uh multiversal plague that goes through universes freezes a universe and then moves on and it just is freezing the multiverse destroying everything in its path and the wild hunt needs series time travel abilities because they lost their ability or um, multiverse ability, excuse me. They need her multiverse abilities because they can't leave their home world anymore. They can't immigrate safely to a new world that the White Frost has. Sent. Like the White Frost is coming for them. They need her help to get safely out of there. And so they've given us an origin story for the White Frost, too. That's not what you said in the video that I watched, though. Yeah, because uh, in the video, that's the book version. Oh, okay. Okay, you're given the game version. So it's like Mesh it are like much insane and like will of time. Just kind of in evil. the well, books, it's just a um an ice age, a coming ice age is all the white frost is. So I was this doing, is a video game. When I was doing this last night, I was actually on Jed's channel. And again, I'm plugging it. Go to Jed's channel, damn it. He talks about it. But I would just type it in, in the search engine on his channel and say, Okay, this is what I want to see and hey video, guess what? I can find out. It's it's that easy. Legatus, drop Jed in the chat, will you? His straight to some of the Witcher videos. I think it's a playlist. Yeah, there's a playlist of my lore, my lore videos. But yeah, there, I mean, that's what I was using. That's how I could how I know what to do is because of your videos. I can go, okay, what am I looking for here to compare it to? And it was easy to find. The, yeah, it's just so vastly different. And that's that's kind of what I did at the end of my review that's coming out tomorrow is, hey, if you want to know what this is actually supposed to look like, check out my lore videos. But uh -huh. yeah, it, this isn't remotely Witcher in any way, shape or form. Besides, they use the word Avalok. Besides, they use the words conjunction of the spheres. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. But this is actually one of the worst lore breaks that they do right here. In the book, he somehow found out that monoliths can give you time travel abilities. That's a problem. <laughs> They don't even explain what the monoliths even do in their own universe. It's like, again, like like ability, um, proactivity, competence. What what three of those does this guy have? It's like he through a mistake saves the Empress's life. Like, how is he competent? How is he good at what he does? How is he smart? Like, oh, you're powerful because somebody said you're powerful. Like, oh my goodness. From my perspective, as somebody who's 
watched so many movies, understands them. Every time you see a monolith, nobody tries to explain them or talk about them. They're mysterious. Let's go back to 2001, A Space Odyssey. We have cavemen worshipping mm-hmm. it. We don't know why. Why did they have to break the canon and lore from everything leading up to this stupid show and say, well, this is what a monolith does? No, it's not. Nobody knows what they do. They're... Uh, yeah, and monoliths that- aren't that big of a deal in the Witcher universe. They're just a byproduct and like a magical battery. That's all that the monoliths are used for right. in the Witcher books. Like uh, Yennefer, she has a necklace that's made out of a monolith stone, and that's just a way for her to conduct her energy. It helps her out because humans need that extra help, that extra little bit of something. Elves don't need monoliths at all to practice magic. They already have it uh-huh. innately within them. Humans need a little bit of help to do it better. Kind of have an innate ability, but... Just to put it on the same level as the elves, they need the monoliths. There's no reason elves would need monoliths. There's no reason that dwarves would have made the monoliths because they really aren't that good with magic. You're like humans are better at magic innately than dwarves. It still makes sense. But there's no explanation. There's no world building. Nothing happens uh-uh. for a reason. No. It just happens. It's like and then and then and then. Oh yes, this. Oh, this, uh, this all right, I want to see. So Look at the. Look at the sword! What is this lightning bolt shit? Yeah, I'm not even going to talk about that piece of again. Against do, do anything. We need to go, do we need to go through this again? Yeah, we're, we're going to go through it a lot faster than we did in recording, because, yeah, we basically frame-by-framed it when we were recording this final episode. Nice. But, yeah, she's like, oh, I, I killed your, uh, your sister. Don't you still want to bang me? It's like, fuck no, you slit my sister's throat. But I'm like a victim. I'm like victim a victim of the patriarchy. You know what? I think that bugged me, but what bugged me most about this freaking scene is you know how all those great times in like the freaking book when like Gerald is like, you know, people are monsters because you know they talk about a lot of why people need monsters to exist. They talk about the government needs the monsters to exist because it gives them something to fight and justify their existence. Uh-huh. And Gerald is very quick to prove, to tell people, it's like, you know what? A lot of these monsters are humans that just did horrible things. And everyone has the capability of becoming a monster inside of them. They're not just all of these wild creatures. In this scene, in this throne room, it's like, he is the monster. And he says, you know what? Your deeds have turned you into a monstrosity and then the freaking monster comes into the throne room and she just runs away and he fights the monster and i'm like you know what if gerald was there he would freaking kill her because he would know who the real monster is yes but they subvert it and they make him the monster him the guy that needs to be in change him with his toxic masculinity that has to go down him with his white man power that they're so afraid of like everything is subverting in that freaking scene and it made me so angry this is why we need Lady B around. We'd have been on stream for eight hours yesterday. We probably would. And I wouldn't have cared. It was fun. Mm-hmm. I had a blast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was but a lot of fun. Happens. There he is. And there's the monster. And he has to find it. And then it just becomes everything the show was. Flavor of the week. Monster of the week. Stupid. Well, and now we get the big epic speech, you know. Oh, yeah. They stole our germs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that chicken run! <laughs> Hold on, go back and let me see that scene. Blow it up. Let me get my screen even larger. I don't think they did what they did at like Rings of Power, where they like copied and pasted. Oh people. yes, they people. did. They did. Oh. Uh... Yes, they did. Guy in front next to Red Chick. He is over on left side of screen as well. Oh, Third one from the left. Same. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that one right there. And him. That's two. Okay, where else? Oh, God. We could. No. Let's, no. Let's not OCD is this. this. The, is this the lark? This looks like the lark. It does look like it her. is. God. Is there stun double? Why? Why did they do that? Did they blame it on the coof again? Ugh. Dude, I hate that they can't get it right. Witchers aren't monsters. They don't, like, get all angry and shit and then don't need potions. Like, 
But he looks like a werewolf. It's like he becomes Perrin in the Wheel of Prime, where the guy like has like these wolf powers, and he just wanders around following the women with his mouth hanging open. Yeah. No, he's becoming. And a you're werewolf. right. This is just werewolf. Yeah, this is just werewolf he's lore white now. Which were- werewolfing out, like they say in that stupid Wednesday show. Hey, it's Wednesday really was good. I like the part. I I did like it. I mean, it had its problems. It was okay. It wasn't more enjoyable than this. And then we got a, a hallway scene that was awful and some light sexual assault from the dwarf. Oh, she's oh, yeah. that she's arrow, like, ass, like, and and yeah. he's not even attracted to women, so if she's sexually assaulting a gay man. That's probably yeah, a she problem. She doesn't like guys either. So what's the what's I going on here, right guys? Now. That's bad. This is so bad. No. And now they have a plan. He's using... Yeah, this is the thing that the show made up in Witcher Season 1, is that for some reasons, mages and sorceresses aren't allowed to use fire magic. Not a thing in the books. You know, Geralt has Igni. That's fire magic. Yennefer uses it at the Battle of Sodom to save everyone. Sabrina Glevesy uses fire magic. It's not really that big of a deal. And so they're like, he has chaos magic now. He's got fire. How do we fight fire? It's like, I know. It's like you're telling me that you could like save somebody's life using magic to reverse the corpse, whatever poison, but you can't deal with fire. Apparently. And this is something that I knew was going to happen because in modern stuff, you cannot have a good man fighting a female opponent. You cannot have a good man fighting women. Oh, yeah. This is a face off with the oppression Olympics. It's like, oh, yeah. And he has the good story to kill her. Fjall has a compelling or at least he could have a compelling story to kill her. His lover turns traitor, kills his family. That's a good reason to want to have her dead. But going into this fight, uh, the Lark is just like, and the, the Empress, she's mine. It's like, you have no reason to really want her any more than Baylor or any of the others. But we can't have, you know, the, the straight white man kill the Empress of victimhood. Well, the black woman has to kill the white woman because she's an oppressor and a colonizer. And so I was waiting for them to do that whole Wakanda thing when they well, we decide to lick the greatest like thing they could say to white people is just call them colonizer like that. You know, you've seen it like so silly. But like that's that's basically what this face off is. And then she stabs them and it's like and it's not even a fight. It's just like, oh, yeah, here's your it's gut. Like, <laughs> okay, l- l- let me point out to the fact because Lady B wasn't with us. Um, hello, this is Daenerys Targaryen. This is yeah. Jon I was Snow. gonna say it was. I told my mom this. It was the reversal of target um Daenerys and Jon. Like just what happened. Oh like, no! Ugh. Just like Jon and and the throne room looks just like the throne room in King's yeah, Landing. We'll, we'll show it later, but yeah, it looks just like a white version of. Yeah. In the red heap, but yeah, what is that this thing? fucking thing? That know. is Arkansas t- mosquito man. Now they're fighting, and for some reason, this random statue has a silver sword because reasons. He throws oh, it out the window. Th- oh, yeah, it is enough. just like Game of Thrones. I, I mean, God. the window's even broken in the back, like it was when Danny died. She's wearing black, <laughs> like when Danny died. The the throne ends up broken, like when Danny died. It looks just like. Daenerys God, stop! Just fuck, stop. fuck, fuckity fuck. That statue is from um. Oh God, the last Caesar, um, Ninth Legion. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And even though this, this isn't their fault, this one isn't their fault because it was made afterwards. They can't have known that this was a thing. This scene reminded me of you know dropping the crown in House of the Dragon and on the steps of the Iron Throne. Yeah, so we got that, that one I too. can't give it to him, but that's Last Legion is where that statue with the silver sword is, because that's where the where Caesar the kid finds Excalibur. She looked like it. She's in pain. She looked like she's about to die. No, no. girl boss she's, moment. She's got and the she baby she takes still. control of her own destiny. She pulls out the dagger. So uh, empowering. <laughs> Get that phallic symbol out of my chest. All right. She's laughing. Oh my god, go. go back to that dagger. There's the, the symbol head. of a dog. Oh my god, it does. Oh my god. It's like a freaking... dire wolf. 
Yeah, I was kidding. Ah, get out. And then isn't that like the symbol of the witch or so too? Like the wolf pendant thing? Yeah, it's a wolf. Yeah, the, 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 the wolf that Geralt's from. Oh, get out, get out, get out. And that predates how Stark. The Witcher had the wolf yeah. pendant before how Stark did. Yeah, but we, we've, we've got Geralt's symbol right there. I like how she has the kind of same Cheetos makeup that, like, Tisa had. Remember, they put the gold in her hair? Mm -hmm. It's really awkward. It's weird. It's just so weird. And then we got the final fight. He sees the silver sword, decides he's going to throw it. He Yay! just hugs it! Like, he doesn't even get to fight! He can't even have his toxic masculinity moment. Like, nope, just... Whoosh. And it's okay. done. It's done. And You're dead. This, uh, this kind of reminded me of uh, Ghostbusters. A little bit where they're like, oh, we got to cross the streams and it'll blow up the monolith. Oh, uh, it is. It is a ghost. Bucket. And so they're like, oh, we can't fight fire magic. But what if we did and we put it at the monolith and blow it up? Oh, my God. The monolith Blowing up the monolith apparently well. is not a good idea. Blowing up the monolith isn't a good idea because it causes the freaking conjunction. Uh, is like that kind of like how like Guy Landriel like is the actual cause of all the problems and like Will yeah she causes problems. Mount Doom the good guys and cause she, the yeah. conjunction in, in, in the books the conjunction is a natural occurrence it is just like orbit of the universes sometimes we get closer sometimes we don't over the course of thousands of years there's an orbit it's a natural like, occurrence yeah just like Mars and Venus lining up with Earth or an eclipse with the moon exactly or the conjunction of Jupiter and um saturn that happened like a couple years ago that was awesome mm -hmm. and we got some uh incredible hulk here some marvel he straight up hulks out what is this this is so stupid he looks so bad but you know that's what he has to be it's toxic white masculinity and then here comes the black woman to sing to him and tame to him and kill him. him well and as um beauty mustang said in the scene this is beauty and the beast now Mm -hmm. Here she comes. She's gonna sing. Oh God! Hey, big I... guy. The sun's getting real low. I'm so, my mom saw this. She's like, she's gonna kill him, isn't she? I'm like, yeah. I was saying, snap her neck, snap her neck. We were hoping, but we knew better. I know. Yeah. We were very buzzed by this point. We were, and uh, no chemistry. So I don't give a shit. I don't care. But I just know that she, the white, toxic white male, can't survive. So she, the black woman has to kill him. So of the seven heroes, one white man survives and he's blinded. And so it's only the untouched females who mm -hmm. are watching the conjunction happen. We just get yeah. reaction shots from, and yeah, they blow up. Half the four at, uh, force dyad dies. And then the conjunction happens. The thing that this whole show has been setting up. And it lasts 10 seconds. Aya Sauron. Aya Sauron. Yeah. And the sky didn't open up. It was just portals. And then this is the first landing. Now, the first landing oh. of the humans took place. I don't even understand what actually happened here. It's like, okay, there's a shipwreck guy. Like, why? What, what was there in... There's yeah, humans. there's just randomly a shipwreck, and this is a very 1700s, 1800s uh -huh. naval ship that they have here. Yeah. This is 200 AD, should be 200 BC, but 200 AD, we should be seeing like a Viking long ships. We should be seeing stuff like Greek, uh, those square sails, stuff uh -huh. like that. Egyptian um, river boats, stuff like that. But now, no, this is the first landing. The so humanity came through at the conjunction of the spheres. Yes, but they were savages. They were basically the equivalent of what is it? It's not Homo sapiens. It's um Homo. What's the other one? Homo erectus. Homo erectus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homo erectus. They're basically just not evolved yet they're homo erectus and then at the first landing in 750 ar there's the first landing the humans coming from what we believe is the skelliga isles they may have landed at the conjunction of the spheres and they're the people who bring culture they're the homo sapiens they're the ones who are advanced they have a culture they're intelligent the first use of magic by a human is at the uh, the first landing so they combine that take that from seven thousand years in the future put it in front and they took the main guy from the first landing, whose name is Yan Becker, the first man who ever used magic as a human. We we get the first woman instead. Uh -huh. Of course, because why not? And then it's all sad and the sword. Female. 
And then we get her burying the sword she's been fighting for the whole time. Burying the brother. Oh, sad. I don't care. Boyfriend's mourning him. And then Aridan is alone in the alternate universe. Instead of going there intentionally with the Ainel, King Oberon, and would eventually lead to the Wild Hunt, he's alone in the alternate reality. Where's the rest of the Wild Hunt going to come from? And instead of building his armor like he did, like, he, he just built it picks himself. it up and there's i have no idea what this is except some dumb like kind of reminded me of that like um what was it the guy in the step stones <laughs> like it's oh, like yeah, stupid the, phantom the of the opera feeder. mask yeah the crab feeder guy like yeah but he just finds his mask and yeah he, like it's just he's... there like we don't know what it is what it's Mm -mm. and l shouldn't have beards but he's got a really long beard at this point how is he surviving in this desert for that long pure fucking magic and it's three moons later there's monsters and there's a line in here that pissed me off more than nearly anything else hey they're talking about the creation of the elder blood you needed to be born from monster and magic so it's saying the elder blood which actually existed for thousands and thousands and it's since the creation of the earth, since the creation of the multiverse, the elder blood, instead of that lasting for as long as people remember, it happens here all of a sudden. Oh, now there's elder blood and you need witchers to make elder blood. But season two said you needed elder blood to make witchers. That's called a paradox. Those are contradictory statements within Netflix's own lore, let alone the true book lore. And then like and the whole thing about how they're all sterile, because that's they have to give up something to have their magical power, right? Mm hmm. So it's just nonsense. So yeah, this baby is Laura Duran, who eventually leads to Siri. But they also say this descendant will sing the song of how these things actually occurred. Which and it and will then, be the song of ice and fire. And then Mini Driver says, "You're the sandpiper. You need to sing the song." So apparently, that's uh. implying that he's part elf and he's related to Siri. Uh huh. He, Dandelion's just some bloke who likes to tell songs and latches on to Geralt because he has a cool story. An actually a cool story. Yeah, because he goes around like his, like, Geralt gets bitches late all the time and he just wants to drink wine and, like, make up cool ballads and get more famous, like, talking about what Geralt is. Like, come on. Just... But now he's. Is that connected. guy supposed to be Dandelion? Yeah, yeah this, this is, is the Askier. Yeah, this is Dandelion. What? Oh my god, I didn't even know who it was, and I didn't- oh my goodness! This yep, is this Dandelion? Yep. That guy's an idiot! Yeah, they changed his name for the show for some reason, so yeah, in Netflix he's called Yaskier, but yeah, that's Dandelion. I think we broke her. Fuck this we broke show! Her. Oh, god! Plop the symbols. See if I can- the symbols. Yeah, the seven symbols for the seven episodes that we should have had. Oh, Let's see, where's the title the sequence? Beginning, yeah. Uh... Oh. All right, she says hi. They try it. Aridan's like, I'm super gay and stuff. She is. Hope Here we go. Again. Okay, pull it up. It's got the same, like, freaking rings of power, like, garbage thing. All right, like well, we... Sound waves. No, we, we've got thing. Brother Death. We've got Gwen's Gay Hammer Dwarf. We've got Michelle Yao. We've got Lark. Lark is a type of bird, right? Right. It's not a type of raven. Metal Lark. It's a metal Lark. Well, and it well, doesn't look nothing like that. Why would the, the woman of the Raven clan be called a LARP? She's a mocking Jay. Don't ask questions. Yeah, I told don't you ask Jennifer questions, Lawrence man. was don't in there. And then we've got a dog's asshole for a kind <laughs> of a dog dude. No, no, no. I already told you that I is know. house that is house Tully's symbol. There is no getting around that. That is that's the road. Not, that's not house Tully. House Tully's a fucking fish on the river. Oh yeah, house sorry, not house Tully. The, the one in the region. The high garden, I, like the rose. You, my brain is broke right now. It's okay. I always have that problem. I was like, my yeah. brain is and, broke. So yeah, this one is actually his symbol. So these two are about the uh, the force dyad couple. For some reason, these are their symbols, but no idea why. But there's seven episodes right there. We know we should have at least an eighth symbol there, maybe even a ninth. 
They'd probably be eight. So, well, like probably well, seven. Well, and then they would what they did with the main Witcher show is they do individual symbols per episode. Uh -huh. And then for the oh, eighth okay. one, they showed all of them together and they would merge together into the yeah. new symbol. Uh, yeah. So that's eight. And that's the Hand of the King. It is. Fuck off, show. <laughs> It's just oh, really God. bad. All right, and then the last thing we got, they're mourning, you know, whatever. And let's see, come on. And then, yeah, I he gets the ending, too, because it's all, like, a bunch of women, and it's like, yeah, the future is female. On the... Yeah, the force yeah. is female. And then, yeah, this is the end credit scene where yeah, uh, Alva Locke somehow time-traveled and is just creepily watching. Siri. Oh, he's why I didn't see the end credit theory. Oh, that they was interesting. They replaced Geralt with him. Mm -hmm. It's Avalon. The series supposed to be looking at your alt right now. Oh yeah, that's the like part where the series like pretending to be a kid. And hey, doesn't she look like Rhaenyra when she sleeps out? Of, she's wearing the same outfit too. Uh, dude, He's so creepy. Even show. the way that he like licks his lips right there. Uh, what about 150 pounds on him? Uh, maybe 200. We got Harvey. Jesus Christ! But then it's over. It's over. Oh, Jesus Christ had oh, nothing to do God. with this. That was like an unholy, oh, monstrous alliance that needs to get yeeted. I've never seen a show that bad. I didn't think I'd physically be able to say that for a long time after Rings Me of Power. I thought like but... Wheel of Prime was like the worst thing we could get. It is just as bad as Wheel of Prime. Just as subversive to the themes. Just as bad in the writing. Just as nonsensical. Like I think Wheel of Prime has the edge of that because it's like um so bad technically. Like the the way that they do stuff and the continuity and stuff but you know what and the funny thing is the shows look exactly the same because they decide that we're not going to use any kind of european cultural references to anything we're just going to take a melange of like eastern cultures and like weird stuff we bought at like cost plus world market and we're just going to create this kind of like multi-ethnic world that like reflects our own worldview and doesn't make sense to the story it looks exactly like wheel of prime that could have been like I'm, well, excuse me. I'm sorry. Like Tarvalon and like Shadow Logos, like they were the same set. Just Shadow Logos was they turned the lights off, and they look a little bit more Indian than this place, but the same kind well, of crap. Let me give you really sad. Jed and I talked about this off stream a couple days ago. We both know where this was set. We both know that he drew from Tolkien. The horrible thing is they could have filmed all this stuff in Northern Europe using Northern European castles. Mm-hmm northern european cities we could have been using stonehenge places like that and done a one almost a damn near one for one and instead they went down the political and a social agenda route and destroyed a very good series well, they didn't destroy it because not one person who's seen this. I mean, God, look at the ratings. It's I know the ratings are awful, but you know what was really offensive to me is at the end when the Lark has to do her like we're freeing the people, like proletariat, like workers unite and rise up against that. And that was to me so freaking offensive after like reading all of the stuff, all of the themes, knowing that Andrew Sapowski wrote this while he was living in a communist country. And that is the ultimate subversion when you have a freaking like peasant revolt, the communist bullshit coming up. I mean, at least they got one thing right with the granaries being empty and everyone being starving. But it's like this guy wrote these books to like show how this was a bad idea, show the corruption of power, show how this isn't the way the world should be. And so what do they do is they take it and subvert it and make it Marxist propaganda like fuck off like i i was so fucking angry when i saw this it's like everything everything that they could do they subverted it i'm <laughs> glad i'm not the only one who's really upset by this oh, i'm not yeah. even into it that much i don't play the video games but i like watched that one time you're what were you playing the third one and there was like mm -hmm. had that jennifer and daryl cut scene and it was awesome but like this, this was just so angry. I mean, the only thing that they didn't do was like totally attack the family. But I guess they kind of did in the way because like their ideal situation is to have like, um, you know, the black woman taking on the mother role and everyone's just kind of like fawning around her. And this is the future of the females. Like there's no men around. We're just going to do our thing in this like stupid. Oh, God, I hate it. 
private chat yet. We need to share. Oh yeah, that, that's been a thing for months. the The trailers get ratioed. Yeah, that's. Oh been... no, this ain't the trailer. I'm looking at the today's comments. It's marvelous. One of the my favorite ones. How do they produce melanin in the Arctic Circle? <laughs> I know. I looked at it and I'm like, these people don't belong here. And it's like that's kind of a thing in like Wheel of Time because the idea is that the world was basically like a snow globe and got shook up and there's a bunch of people that don't belong in these certain places <laughs> and that's like an ironic globe. thing. But like I'm sorry you're in Iceland. Like why does it look like the United Nations? Because Iceland is beautiful and green. Greenland is ice and ugly. Don't you I remember the right? one. The part where Geralt screams, there is a tempest in me while sailing with Jack Sparrow to Atlantis to meet Aquaman. <laughs> the fuck? That's almost as great as, this is Mordor country. <laughs> I think that's it here too. <sighs> These comments are just priceless. So steps through, Hagrid steps through the portal. You're a wizard, Geralt. <laughs> God, I, I love, love the, the part comments. when someone told Netflix I got more entertainment from reading the comments than the trailer. I absolutely love it when Geralt screamed, Wakanda forever! <laughs> when uh, Geralt told Yennefer, pass the bong, man. Sure made me tear up. That's what we all needed. It's Mormon time. <laughs> Oh my I God. love the part where Netflix said to Amazon, I know what we are going to do today. Oh, and they got Jared tokens. The evil cannot create anything uh -huh. now. Oh, yeah. You shut up. <laughs> this is gold. It's like, I love the part when Henry Cavill came up and said, you shall not pass. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> When Geralt drops in a pool of lava and says to Siri, hasta la vista, baby. Can we read that one? <laughs> I learned in episode two that the elves are gay. It took you two episodes? You weren't paying attention to the first. I'm like, there's Jeez. elves in the show? Wait, there was, this is a Witcher story? I was just waiting. <laughs> I was like mm -hmm. one of the savages comments I ever saw, like a Wheel of Time, like a oh, video that someone left is like i'm still waiting to see the wheel of time adaptation that's the best response to this rings of power wheel of time just all of it so I'm, I'm waiting for the adaptation yeah i'm still waiting, waiting. <laughs> well uh, i've got the perfect uh, message that we can all send to N netflix <laughs> That is where we'll need to start to wrap things up. It's a travesty. It's a travesty. At this point, I'm going to have about, let's see, with the math, actually 11 hours. 11 hours of blood origin breakdown, and it's not going to be in to figure out all the bad stuff in it. It's 11 hours, 12 at this point. It's going to be a long, long week all that Witcher content for me. But uh, it's been great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me and enduring this with me. I don't know if I would have been making it through travesty on my own without you guys. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Uh, Lady B, are there any final thoughts on the show or anything you want to plug? I don't know. I, I just, I'm just i just looking forward to keep reading the books and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again about it. You gotta finish I like, book two. I want to do the new one, the next one. I know. I really want to talk about it and I like going back to the books because it's like I can rage farm this stuff and this made me so angry last night. Everyone got an earful. Anyone that knows me heard me. But I like, I just want to remember that the, there is good stuff and that the world is a beautiful place full of wonder and love and good stuff so i like going back to the good stuff so if i have to read the books if i have to go watch like the um extended editions of lord of the rings whatever i have to do just remember that there's something that we can keep fighting for and keep going out there and i can also go back and keep working on my stuff and you guys can work on your stuff too and just try to put out what we want to see in the world and kind of fight against this 
this endless wave of like Marxism and postmodernism and nihilism. So we can fight back against this. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you guys for having me on. And um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing in the future. I'm just trying to get through the holidays. So I'll keep you guys posted. All right. We just need to do that sort of destiny stream. Itching yes, for. I got to finish that. All right. Uh, Hail Mustang. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you've definitely taken a liking to this franchise that I, I haven't seen anybody really latch on quite as much as you. And you've just got that background knowledge. So it makes it a lot easier for you with knowing the mythology, knowing the ties with Tolkien and whatnot. But uh, do you have any final things that you want to say about the show or anything you want to plug? Fuck off show. Yeah. It's that Fuck simple. That's um, simple. I'm working on my Mustangs uh, site. I've got the banner up, so I'm going to play with that a little bit, getting ready for the new year on it. And other than that, fuck off, show. Just fuck off. Perfect. All right. And for me, tomorrow I will be releasing my actual long form review of this show. It's going to be long. It's going to be hard to watch. It's going to be painful, but I'm doing it for you guys. So that'll be out tomorrow at 11 p.m. Pacific time or 11 a.m. Excuse me, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And over the course of the next week, I'll be putting out the individual episode reactions that Mustang and Dermy and I did. It, it's going to be painful. I don't know if they're going to be my actual daily videos or release separately from those. I haven't decided yet. They're just going to be so long that I doubt I should should use them as my daily content but we'll see other than that my normal live screen schedule getting back to the witcher 3 and my daily video content but that's all i have for today thank you all for joining us we had an incredible chat some great viewers some new faces here hail the goddess jaden hamilton and avenus 1112 great to have you here man and everybody else who joined it's been great to have people to commiserate with in all of this but that's all we have for today See you guys next time. Take care. Hey, yo, are you feeling what I'm doing up in here? Oh, I know you are. Do you miss all the good, compelling stories that we used to get back in Hollywood that they ain't putting down no more? Oh, oh I know you missing it. So check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy morality and modern day mental illness issues baby book one down in flames book two apocalypse then these are currently on sale what are you waiting for get your hands on them and we got book three kill the dark is coming down the pipeline just wait for all the good stuff this dropping you ain't gonna be disappointed fam Thank you.